Howdy. All right. So. What in the unspeakable name of Yuxathoth are we doing tonight? We're doing two things. Um, the first is preempting um, a fairly lengthy deep dive. Let's see if the audio is good here. A fairly lengthy deep dive into. Um, Someone who I had put out of uh, sight and memory for a little while, Thomas Picardus. Um, and his extraordinarily bad, uh, I want to say in advance of going into a gender essentialist arguments, but we will, we will break them down more particularly later on. Um, this will be explorative. I say with confidence that his argumentation is bad. Um, we're going to spend the next week or so, um, during at least half of streams, uh, getting into the nitty gritty as to why that is. So I don't want to say too much in advance. And it's been a little while since I saw the Vosh debate, and since I saw the follow-up um, conversation with uh, Capturing Christianity, which is an awful channel, um, hosted by a former friend who tragically turned it out to be awful. Um, and uh, I think he talked to Destiny, didn't he? I'm pretty sure he did. In any case, this is not just a uh, philosopher with um, some toxic or retrograde ideas or some, you know, bad bad reasoning that he's put to paper in some journal or whatever. This is somebody who has taken it upon himself to target people who do not know how to discern a good argument from a bad argument in this sphere, leveraging his credentials uh, to bolster bad argumentation. Um, which is why there is a particular interest in this figure. Um, these are possibly the most toxic creatures to come out of academia. Uh, they provide stilts for extremely um, unscrupulous actors uh, of sort of the Matt Walsh increasingly uh, destiny, and hopefully not the loner box variety, but we're going to be looking at a debate later on, which some people have interpreted that way. Um, I have a suspicion it's not as bad as people are saying, but I haven't seen any of it, so we'll have to see. And generally, I've been disappointed more often by my charity than by my cynicism. And for some reason, people are always mad about me adhering to the latter. Anyways, so today we're going to start with going through the initial debate with Vosh. We're not going to necessarily listen to the whole thing. We might, depending on how fast it goes. But what I want to do um, for the first half of this stream is get sort of a roadmap. Um, what is the tenor of his argumentation when he presents to the public? Um, when we look at his papers, what are his principal sources and what is sort of his methodology? Because what we're going to end up doing is we're going to go through every single thing that he relies upon to substantiate his argumentation. Um, and we are going to determine definitively whether or not uh, his argumentation is justified, whether he's pulling some shenanigans, or whether, you know, he's just... It's just kind of a dumb poopy head. Either. So that's today. Um, we're going to start with the uh, Vosh debate. We're going to be taking some notes. We're going to be looking at... Um, one of Bagardus's papers here. Why am I so small here? We haven't started the uh, debate coverage yet. Oh, my hair is looking awful today, even more so than usual. Ah! There we go. Whatever, that's fine. No, get over there. That goes. That's what I get for not combing it after showering. Anyways, we'll live. I know you're all here for my looks, but whatever. God, that is just... That is just... Hang on, this is actually really bothering me. One moment. Ah! 
Okay, I guess it looks like I'm mushroom today. It's fine. Damn it all. The paper. Agardus on. Some internal problems with revisionary gender concepts. 20 or so pages long. I'll pull on the screen for you quickly so you can see it. I have to play around with the scaling here, but that's fine. So we'll be looking at, this will be sort of a guide once we're finished with the debate coverage. Um, maybe I'll read the abstract quickly. Feminism has long grappled with its own demarcation problem. Exactly what is it to be a woman? And the rise of trans-inclusive feminism has made this problem more urgent. I will first consider Sally Haslinger's, quote, social and hierarchical, end quote, account of women resulting from ameliorative inquiry, quote, unquote. She balances, she balances, sorry, ordinary use of the term against the instrumental value of novel definitions in advancing the cause of feminism. Then it will turn to Catherine Jenkins' charge that Haslinger's view suffers from a, quote, inclusion problem, unquote. It fails to class many trans women as women. Jenkins offers a novel norm relevancy account of what woman is to avoid the inclusion problem. Unfortunately, Jenkins' account has serious internal problems, i.e. problems by Jenkins' own lights. It is unintelligible, or it suffers from an inclusion problem of its own. After that, I will develop both, oh, sorry, I will develop novel arguments for the conclusion that the project of ameliorative inquiry, I'm going to get new glasses soon, and so I'm going to be missing words less often. I've got, apparently I've got astigmatism that was diagnosed, so explains why uh, reading has been so painful for the last year. Um, after that, I will develop novel arguments for the conclusion that the project of ameliorative inquiry is both incoherent and also impossible to complete, at least impossible to complete in a trans-inclusive way. Trans-inclusive feminism, therefore, would do well to move beyond ameliorative inquiry, insofar as that's not possible. Trans-inclusive feminism inherits the incoherence of ameliorative inquiry. And the reason why Bogardus is going to be interesting here is because he's being very bad faith, because this is the conclusion that he's counting on. He is counting on it not being possible, and I think it's going to come out in the uh, Vosh debate if memory serves. Um, but this is not someone whose principal concern is making feminism trans-inclusive. Um, always be wary of somebody, not not who talks about Aristotle. Aristotle is very important. Always be wary of a philosopher in 2022 who relies on Aristotle. <sighs> okay. Well, without further ado, let's pull up the uh, let's pull up the debate and let's just begin because we have a lot of work ahead of us. We may be we may be on this train for a little while. Ah, <sighs> let's make me bigger to inflate my ego. I am Vosh after all. Come on, yeah. there we go. I'm just speaking in the third person for dramatic effect. This is, of course, my uh, famous debate with Thomas Bogardus on modern day debate. Bobushki. Okay. Let us begin. Hey everybody, tonight we're debating whether or not trans women are women, and we are starting right now. With the amount of money, uh, what's his name again? James? James gets for his channel. You'd think, like, he'd have better equipment than this. It's, it's kind of painful watching him host these days. With Vosh's opening statement, thanks so much for being with us, Vosh. In fact, I feel like it was better earlier on. Like, it's gotten worse over time. I don't know how that's possible. Vosh, the floor is all yours. Hello, uh, I'm Vosh. Okay, so there are two basic arguments here. First of all, the idea of sex and gender being distinct uh, uh, categories. They obviously are. I don't think anybody disbelieves this. There are obviously things that we refer to, which are in the purview of the experience of being a man and a woman, which are not defined biologically. Whether it be light blue and pink being distinguished... Hang on, your hair looks better parted to one side. Like... I think I lost the capacity to do that, though, because I messed it up, because it was parted to one side before. I guess what if I do kind of like that? No, that's terrible. It's parted in the middle. Ugh. 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 All right. That's okay. We will survive. 
switched gendered colors, the clothing that we wear, the way we style our hair, these are things which are not derivative of our biology. They are derivative of social standards which change. You can look at other parts of the world in which they're different. You can look at different points in time within our own country and they are different. There's no getting around that. It's not like biology is changing rapidly year to year as the fashions do. If, if people don't like, you know, the idea of gender and sex being separate, then we can simply say that when I refer to gender, I'm referring to some other separate category that is not sex, but describes social differences um, that tend to be associated with sexual ones. And once you have that, you know, nailed down, the following argument is one of utility. Uh, we construct definitions. We do it to serve our own purposes as humans. The only reason definitions exist is because they serve us. We are their masters. And if I believe, as is the case, by the way, of many medical and psychiatric institutions, if we believe that the uh, definition of woman uh, uh, being one tied entirely to sexual differentiation is arbitrary, inconsistent, and harmful, um, and that there is a better a more utility-serving definition one could use, say by self-identification, then that is the one that I will use. I have no interest whatsoever in abiding by some harmful, arbitrary standard out of a need to stick to tradition when there's a perfectly serviceable and better one that makes people more happy and hurts nobody lying right there. And that is why I say prescriptively that trans women are women and descriptively uh, they have been treated as women uh, historically in our society uh, in varying extents throughout history, depending on the culture and time period. It's a complicated business, but we can get there. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening, Bosh. And if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, want to let you know, folks, we're a neutral platform hosting debates, panels, and discussions on virtually every topic. Want to let you know, we hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. And... I'm going to kick it over to Dr. Bogardis for his opening as well. Want to remind you, the speaker's views are their own. So the speakers are not speaking on behalf of any institution that they are affiliated with or have been affiliated with. And Dr. Thomas Bogardis is an associate professor of philosophy. He earned his PhD from the University of Texas and works in the areas of epistemology, philosophy of mind, and philosophy of gender. You can find his publications on his website by Googling, Googling his name, and both guests are linked in the description right now. With that, Dr. D Dr. Bogardis, thanks for being with us. The floor is all yours for your opening as well. All right. Can I share my screen? You bet. Okay. Um, so everybody can see that, yeah? Yep. Okay, um, so if you're unable to see this for some reason, you should know that the slides are available at tinyurl.com slash modern day debate June, uh, the month of June, and just, there's no spaces or capitals in there. Okay, I'm just going to start my timer right now. So um, the topic of... It's cutting off a little bit, and I'm probably going to want to expand the size of this. Actually, why am I looking at Vosh's version of this? Hang on one sec. I should be looking at the... Um... The modern day debate one is uh is james known for uh copyright striking i'm gonna assume not i just want to see the slides okay here we go okay um so everybody can see that yeah yeah there we go Okay, um, so if you're unable to see this for some reason, you should know that the slides are available at tinyurl.com slash modern day debate June, uh, the month of June, and just, there's no spaces or capitals in there. Okay, I'm just going to start my timer right now. So um, the topic of our conversation today is um, this sentence, trans women are women, whether trans women are women. And what I want to try to do is explain um, why this is such a persistent philosophical question. I started thinking about this about six or seven years ago. And so I'm going to share some of the things I've learned in that time um, and try to convey to the category of trans women is, is very recent. I don't think it's that persistent a philosophical question. To you, the, the landscape of the debate as I see it, um, in a way that I hope will be useful and interesting no matter what your views are on this topic. And to try to explain why it's a persistent philosophical question, um, specifically what I'm going to do is try to show how on six common interpretations of this sentence, trans women are women, including five that Vosh has explored and endorsed, uh, the sentence turns out not to be true. And this is crucial again, because recall from the, uh, the essay we looked at just a second ago, um, he's, he's doing a really slippery move here. And he wants to say, 
that he's being concerned, right? There, there's there's a, a coherency problem. And so he's going to say, uh, trans-inclusive feminism, therefore, would do well to move beyond ameliorative inquiry. Insofar as that's not possible, trans-inclusive feminism inherits the incoherency, the incoherence of ameliorative inquiry. So it looks like he's making a contribution to uh, philosophy around uh, trans-inclusive feminism and feminism generally. Um, which, by the way, should just include by default trans-inclusive feminism, but leaving that aside for now. Um, but what he's actually doing is he's doing something, he's doing something very slimy. Um, under the auspices of making a good faith critique, he's slipping in a description of a disagreement that he is going to cast as being a positive argument, or not, not as a positive argument per se, but he's going to cast in such a light as it pushes a reader who accepts him uncritically, um, to adopt the perspective that this is not possible. Uh, trans-inclusive feminism inherits an incoherence. It is incoherent by definition as a result of, of inheriting that. So I'm, I'm not surprised by how dim the introduction is here. So um, just because he's, he's fundamentally just going to argue here, just bluntly, that trans women are not women. Just a quick, I think, obvious clarification. I think it's pretty obvious to everyone that um, when people say trans women are women, what they mean is all trans women are women, not just some. So I think that's the question under under consideration, whether all trans women are women. Now, to see whether that's true or false, to evaluate whether that's true or false, I think we would have to get clear on what it means to be a woman. We'd have to think about the meaning of that word woman in order to see whether it's true that all trans women are women. And so now I'm going to consider those views I promised a second ago. The first view is <clears throat> what we might call a biological view, according to which women are adult human females. Um, now, I think this is the sort of traditional, historical, ordinary sense of the word. This is what the word ordinarily means. Um, there are a few reasons to think that. We can talk about these in the discussion period if you'd like. Um, first of all, there's words for other species that we use for the adult males and the adult females of those species. And it would be pretty surprising if we didn't have similar words for um, the adult males and adult females of our species. So there's an immediate problem here with calling this the biological view. If it's in reference to um, the role in reproduction as in that member of, of human society that bears children, as, as a generally persistent view, women presenting individuals will occupy that position generally not universally though there will be exceptions and those exceptions will be more or less visible depending on the culture of acceptance of of, of people not manifesting those external features commonly associated with uh women in the general but also either bearing children or not being able to bear children um there's a lot being loaded into the word biological here first of all what does it mean for someone to be a, an adult human female from a biological sense well, if you're an ancient Greek, for example, uh, you think that you think that birth, among other things, is a it, it, like gestation and birth and, and like the the carrying of of young, is a process of fermentation, and that things like semen come from the veins and whatnot. Like you have you have no conception of the actual. You have a very, I should say rather, you have a very flawed, and uh, low resolution conception of what the the specific biology associated with femaleness, quote unquote is, even from a gender essentialist standpoint. Um, so, it, it, it's, 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 it's sketchy to call adult human female equals woman simply the biological view, because the biological view changes radically. What adult means changes radically over time. What female means changes radically over time. So, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, this is the definition that virtually all dictionaries give. Of course, dictionaries aren't infallible. They make mistakes. But the fact that this is what dictionaries... What's it mean to present as a woman? It just means to um, have the, the external features that are culturally associated with being category woman. And is that circular? Yes, it is. That's that's a part of the arbitrariness. That's, that's one of the reasons why um, gender is something that you should absolutely interrogate, just as much as any other political or, or social assumption because that's precisely all it is. We say is some evidence that this is the way the word is ordinarily used. Um, but most importantly, I think the strongest bit of evidence is that um, 
as far as I can tell, virtually all trans inclusive philosophers agree that this is the ordinary use of the word. Um, that, that doesn't mean they recommend it, um, but they acknowledge and concede that this is what people ordinarily mean. I'm not sure whether Vosh agrees. Um, he said some things um, that sound like he might disagree. Um, just a few days ago, he said, um, there's so much arbitrariety with how these terms get posed. I don't think that a biologically prescriptivist attitude towards gender is the historically correct one. So possibly Vosh disagrees with this. Well, he, he's correct because what is being loaded into the biological is going to be entirely contingent on like the state of science, if it even exists of, of whatever cultural um, uh, setting you're, you're responding to. Um, like, again, all of these distinctions are equally nominal. What's the difference between an adult human female and, and a non-adult human female? Uh, females can, can give birth very, very young before we generally consider, uh, females to be adult. Um, same with, same with, uh, same with males. Not, not get pregnant, but they, they can, they can reproduce. Um, by the same token, um, as somebody in chat pointed out, brain development ends well after that point. Or rather, it peaks well after that point. So what on earth are we talking about? Well, these are going to be social descriptions. These aren't these aren't biological categories. There's nothing firm about this. Um, these are these are social descriptions fundamentally. Uh, nature does not register a distinction between the adult and the non-adult. There is what you can do and what you can't do. If you can reproduce, uh, then you can reproduce. If you can't reproduce and you stay not being able to reproduce, then your line's gone. That's how that works. But as I said, a lot of trans inclusive philosophers agree that this is the way the word is used in dominant mainstream contexts. So here's some quotations. I'll let you <clears throat> read those on your own. But Robin Dembrov, Mari Jenny Saul, according to most ordinary speakers and dictionaries, woman is a sex term, a term that picks out those who have certain biological traits. I mean, this is just talking about common use now. This, I mean, by ordinary is is meant in, in these discussions ordinary in the context of the last couple hundred years at most Ray Mikola, Sally Haslinger, Jennifer Saul, these are all philosophers working very much from a trans inclusive direction. Um, Simone de Beauvoir. Um, seems to use the word in this ordinary biological way as well. Um, again, that's not to mean they recommend this definition. Um, a lot of these philosophers think that this is a problem and we need to change it. Because when you think about the question whether all trans women are women, if being a woman requires being biologically female, then these philosophers think it's going to turn out that... President Sunday, we have better knowledge over time about biological sciences. I mean, obviously, but the point is the category precedes those. So the biological detail is now being loaded onto an essentialized concept. The concept is not emergent from biological science. That's the crucial distinction. So when he's talking about the biological view rhetorically, what he's doing is he's trying to leverage biological content, like scientific biological content, onto a category that can't really bear it because it's not, it, it's, it, they're unrelated in, in, a, in a critical way. Um, or not unrelated. The word I'd rather use is... Um, they're, uh, one is culturally contingent, um, in a way that one probably also is, but at a different level, but that's, that's probably too much for you. So we're going to stick with that. But the point is woman, adult, human, female, these, these concepts precede our understanding of human biology that would lend to a sex essentialist view of womanhood. If womanhood was downstream from the biological view. Um, if we just invented the concept woman today to refer to an organism um, of the human species that has such and such capacities would be less problematic. For one, the concept would not be as culturally laden, right? Because a, a major problem here is that the relationship is reversed. It's not that we're scientifically identifying a type for purposes of research. It's that we are insisting on a type in our research for non-scientific reasons. Not all trans women are women. In fact, none are. And they consider that to be a problem. 
Here's a quotation from Catherine Jenkins saying as much, saying that if you fail to respect the gender identifications of trans people, that's a serious harm. And I think Vosh would agree that that is a problem. Um, back in 2021, he said, if someone makes an argument that a person isn't a woman when they claim to be a woman, I would say that's transphobic. And then here's another quotation saying something similar. I'll let you read. Okay, so as I say, a lot of philosophers wish to move away from this view of what it means to be a woman. And one alternative that they've explored is what we might call a social role view, according to which uh, to be a woman is to be someone who functions or behaves or is treated a certain way socially. Um, now, sometimes Vosh seems to endorse this sort of view. Uh, here's an example from back in March. So he says, I am a gender abolitionist, so I don't want these designations at all. But as long as they exist, these designations, men and women, we're talking about social roles. Now, notice the move here, right? He's moving from a biological to a social role. He's insisting that the biological precedes the social. The social, um, not using this term in, in the same context as, as in this paper that we were talking about earlier, the social role is ameliorative. It's to make up for the fact that the biological uh, view excludes trans women. Um, the, uh, the problem here is that uh, these are actually reversed. The category woman is socially derived, purely socially derived, and is downstream from reproductive function from the vantage point of a patriarchal society that simply doesn't count those who cannot reproduce. It's pragmatic. Um, it's it's pragmatic and essentially tyrannical, uh, which is which is fundamentally the problem here. It's it's arbitrary, not arbitrary in the sense of like anyone and and everyone just like picks and chooses. Um, that's something that Bagardus is going to criticize. It's arbitrary in the sense that or picks and chooses how, they're, how they will identify, rather. It's arbitrary in the sense that the very categories themselves are deployed in a way that is of pragmatic use to a uh, political entity. That is to say, its relationship to the truth of the matter is entirely contingent on uh, use and stability. Um, and again, just a few days ago, so he says... Um given how arbitrary these definitions are, I think one where we acknowledge that man and woman, as we refer to it generally, is a social trend, something which refers to social roles and attitudes, not biology. That's probably the one that hurts the fewest, fewest people. Okay, so that's the social role view. And now the question before us is, does this sentence come out as true or false on the social role view? Will it be true that all trans women are women? Um, well, to figure that out, we'd have to know exactly what social role we're... Well, de definitionally, they're, we're, we're saying they're women because they abide by a social role, which presumably includes self-ascription on this view. So all trans women would be women. You would simply be making the distinction that they are making uh, a positive expression of, of womanhood that they wouldn't have to make if there wasn't already an essentialist... Uh, cast that place them into the male role based on genital sets at birth so yeah they, they would be categorically that's that follows necessarily we're talking about what is the social role that is taken to be definitive of womanhood and it turns out it's pretty hard to say what social role we're talking about exactly given as Vosh said in his opening statement all the variation across time and culture it's hard to say what social role is had in common by all and only women throughout time and place. It doesn't have to be held in common by all and only women throughout time and place. Um, these things can be negotiated contingently in in particular times. And I think Vosh's view on this is that it would be better eventually if you didn't have to make the ameliorative uh, move of having to transition because what your social role was was simply negotiated on an individual basis. You, you weren't simply assigned a role based on whether or not you have specific squishy bits between your legs. Um, this is... This is remarkably dumb. I, I, didn't re I don't remember this argument being this dim. But even if you found one and said, there, that's the social role that's definitive of being a woman, there's a problem because there's no guarantee that all trans women will play that role, will, will occupy that position in society. Yeah, I, so it's pretty clear what's going on. So he thinks that we're trying to fix woman as some like essential universal category um, that defies context. But but it doesn't. Like the social role view 
is embedded in like a larger view of social norms generally as being something entirely contingent and, and ultimately rooted in pragmatic concerns. That's, that's where that comes in from. They, they don't just insist, no, woman is a social role because God said so. That would defeat the purpose. You, you, you would be making the exact same move as the, somebody who insists on the quote-unquote biological view um, who ascribes a reproductive role or, 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 or insists on reproductive role being an essential part of womanhood. And that fails for obvious reasons. Among other things, even pragmatically, uh, not all people who we would nonetheless insist on being women, because we can't actually commit ourselves to the biological view, can reproduce, ever. And moreover, there are human beings that simply defy uh, categorization on that scheme. So, yeah. yeah. Catherine Jenkins, again, a trans-inclusive philosopher, criticizes the social worldview on those grounds, saying there could... There may well be, and there easily could be, and there may in fact be trans individuals who do not present as women, and so are not treated as women, don't play this role, don't occupy this position in society. Or there could be um, trans individuals who do present as women, but aren't read as women, or aren't taken seriously, or aren't <clears throat> treated as women, um, in which case they won't occupy the right position in society in order to count as a woman on this social role view. Okay, so he's insisting on the success of the social role view or, or the prevalence of the social role view as a condition of its of its success. Um, the problem, though, is that the social role view is is not a description of how things are actually done necessarily. Um, it is itself a polemic against the so-called biological view, but primarily it's it's a view that is promulgated as a more healthy way given present history to view the concept of womanhood. Um, there's variations on this, but that's that's generally the move. This is why a lot of gender abolitionists ad adopt a view like this. It's not because they think woman is an essential concept that simply bears specific social uh, content. Um, it's that given that gender is still a prevalent element of, of, of culture and society, this is a better way to view it that doesn't um, result in you tyrannizing over uh, people who don't fit into this kind of categorization scheme. So um, my sense of the state of play in the current philosophical debate is um, philosophers have moved away from this social role view because... You also need teleology to have any notion of progress, good, incorrect, etc. That's not true. You can just have development generally. Um, there's a... Uh, I, I think it's... Um, is it Pickering? Hang on. There's a good account of it in Ian Hacking's Social Construction of What that I've been reviewing recently. I think it's Pickering. Yeah, it's Pickering. Um, the Social Construction of... or it, What is it called? Inventing Quirks? That's a book I really want to read. Um, where are we? Where are we? Da, 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 da. Something, something quirks. Anyways, um, there are notions of progress that are simply... Of, of this sort. Not that there's like some essential end to the thing, but that if a if a scientific regimen uh, produces new and stable um, places from which to launch on more and more inquiry and more and more experiment to positively, da, 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 you can have progress that way. Um, it doesn't need to be in a linear direction towards some ultimate form of truth. So you don't you don't need teleology. You you can talk about it in a teleological way, which is, con, which is confused. Um, but that's not teleological. Teleology means that the end is uh, contained as an essential part in germ. Uh, I guess well in, in in the germ in the seed, right? So the teleology of a tree on a teleological on a, of a seed on a teleological view is the end result of the tree. That's not how science works. Um, it turns out false that all trans women are women on this view. Um, and at least in the popular culture and even in the philosophical literature, the view that's sort of rising to prominence is a self idea Can you describe the concept of developing without mentioning purpose or ends? Absolutely. Um, so if, if this activity, like think of, think of Minecraft, right? Um, you build a big tower, right? Really, really big. Now at the top of that tower, you can build, you can use that as the base to build another edifice and build other towers. Hell, you can build you can build tunnels sideways in all directions, right? Now, what's what's that's that's positive development. 
What's the end of that? Well, there isn't any set end of that. Um, you may you may encounter limitations, like the world may resist you in various ways, and that may push you in specific directions and not in others. But there's no set end to what you're doing there. The D view. I think that's um, coming to be the most popular view, as I said, at least at the popular level. So on this view, um, we're told to be a woman is to be someone who identifies as a woman. And I won't be the first to notice that, oh, well, here's a quotation from Vosh endorsing that, by the way. Okay, but I won't be the first. Hang on, I need to, I need to catch the last couple seconds, sorry about that. To count as a woman on this social role view, to do not present as women, and so are not treated as women, don't play this role, don't occupy this position in society. Or there could be um, trans individuals who do present as women, but aren't read as women, or aren't taken seriously, or aren't <clears throat> treated as women, um, in which case they won't occupy the right position in society in order to count as a woman on this social role view. So um, my sense of the state of play in the current philosophical debate is um, philosophers have moved away from this social role view because um, it turns out false that all trans women are women on this view. Um, and at least in the popular culture and even in the philosophical literature, the view that's sort of rising to prominence is a self-ID view. I think that's um, coming to be the most popular view, as I said, at least at the popular level. So on this view... Um, well, that's the gender abolitionist view, essentially. Um, because what you're basically saying is don't enforce, don't impose a gender identity on someone because they don't match a prior categorization scheme. That's all the self-ID view is essentially saying. It's not saying that woman is an essential category that bears the content someone who identifies as a woman. It's written in some, some divine book by God somewhere. That thou shalt call a woman, they who call themselves woman, or something like that. It's, it's literally just, um... We're in, again, we're in a cultural situation which uh, we've identified the fact that gender uh, identifications generally, genders as, as essentially as categories, are all con are all contingent and pragmatic or accidental. Um, and insisting upon them uh, when people are critical of them or when people are uh, ascribing them, self-ascribing, uh, self-identifying rather um, against previous norms that we now consider to be defunct. Um nothing good comes out of that. And so when someone insists that the best, so when we're talking about gender, we're not talking about what of these limited set of categories can I slot myself into that were given to us by people whose judgment we don't respect anymore. Um, what we talk about when we're talking about gender now is like, uh, given that we, we insist on, on social role categorization like this at this level, um, what are the options? Well, the options are undetermined. They're more myriad than uh, man, woman, and and slash whatever the hell Keemstar's beard is. Um, it's 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 just like for example, it, it's often made fun of. But when like neo pronouns and stuff like that, and xenogenders and all these weird little things, people identifying as as uh, uh, unicorns and demonic astronauts and whatnot, like it sounds intrinsically funny. And to a certain extent, it sort of is. But by the same token, what's actually going on here? Are they saying they're literally cartoon characters? Well, some people do, and that's that's a little bit silly. But if what they're trying to do is they're trying to find, um, they're trying to compose an archetype that represents kind of what they're going for, like what what they're trying to convey by their identification, um, it becomes a little less so. That 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 can all get negotiated separately, and like the. Like certain certain types of identities also draw in other cultural things, and it can get really complicated in that way. But the point is, insisting upon a, a rigidly limited set of categories just based on common use is preposterous because common use can be wrong, or it can be presumptuous, or it can be unfounded. We're told to be a woman is to be someone who identifies as a woman. And I won't be the first to notice that, oh, well, here's a quotation from Vosh endorsing that, by the way. Okay, but I won't be the first to notice that it looks like there's a threat of circularity here. No, there's not we a threat asked, of circularity. What, what, it, is, it is 100% it is, it is circular. It's a contradiction. Um, you're denying the previous use of, of, you're denying previous use that gives us the category 
um, but still permitting someone to identify with the category because they still nonetheless identify with practices that are born of previous use. Obviously, like, especially when we're talking about, like, someone who functions, behaves, or is treated a certain way socially. That's not a biological inheritance. Our primate ancestors didn't wear dresses or bras um, or, or were, were, were told to stay home and not join the military and, and work raising the children or whatever. Um, that's a thing that was culturally contingent um, and was imposed very tyrannically. In fact, by the way, on that note, you will find in a lot of the literature on the origins of democracy that they had to pay men uh, to return home to their uh, private concerns at certain points because politics was such an escape from the tedium of domestic life. Women in ancient societies were kept in societies from which you get these categories from uh, were often kept in a position of de facto slavery. Um... So what we're talking about here is we have this deep, convoluted inheritance of, of accidental, contingent, da 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 And uh, nonetheless, we also come out of that inheritance. And so despite the fact that we're critical of it, there are a lot of people who nonetheless, especially given the fact that that criticism is not ubiquitous culturally now, um, there are people who still uh, want to identify by by that rubric and indeed maybe maybe fit most appropriately within it. So when someone identifies as a woman, what's your basis for challenging them? Why on earth would you? They're they're giving a a an authoritative self description of where they fit in best because that really is truly up to them. Um, the the capacity to reproduce in a particular kind of way, the presence of certain organs, all these things are themselves absolutely contingent. I'm a Christian nationalist. I read the word of God. Oh, well, you haven't read the part, obviously, where he breaks apart houses and, and relationships between fathers and sons and da-da-da-da-da, because uh, God is not on the side of nationalists if you actually are literate. He asked what a woman is, and the definition used the word woman um, when defining the term. But it may be that there's no actual circularity here. I'm curious if you would somehow get a debate with Bogardus. Um, Once we're done like going through all of this, that would be an interesting move, wouldn't it? I'll, I'll look into it. I'll look into it. If the word woman in the definition means something else than um, the meaning we're supposed to get from this definition. So let me give you one example. Here's something um, Vosh said. He said, if you want, you can say a woman is a person who would like to internally and externally adhere to the social roles and expectations associated with a woman, or at the very least, a social archetype. That's actually a very... That's a surprisingly well-formulated statement on the matter. Um, that's 100% correct. That's which is exactly what I described. I wasn't basing this off of Vosh, by the way, even though, of course, I am him. Um, yeah, he's, he's right. So that, that's that's a perfectly coherent gender abolitionist view. Um, you pragmatically accept pre-existing categories that have a, a contingent and accidental and even oppressive um, history and content um, because... First of all, to do otherwise is to play into that. But secondly, um, that's actually a perfectly appropriate thing for somebody to do because human beings are also themselves culturally and historically contingent beings. Um, that's how that's 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 how we come about. We're we're born in time, uh, at the tail end of a, a long trajectory of previous generations of organisms. Um, and all the cultural inheritances that they have, so that affects how they raise us as well. Da -da 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 -da, like, that's this is this is perfectly coherent so again thread of circularity because we're using the word woman there but suppose we meant woman in the ordinary sense adult human females just suppose that's what was meant well let's, let's play this out let's suppose that's what was meant if you want you can say a woman is a person who would like to internally and externally adhere to the social roles and expectations associated with a woman or at the very least the social archetype actually, i actually have no idea where he's going to go with this um, so it's not the very same sense to be defined, um, it's another sense. Well, the problem is that um, many women won't want that. Um, many women don't wish to adhere to the social roles and expectations associated with being an adult human female. As Catherine Jenkins has pointed out, a lot of women flout traditional gender norms. Would like to internally and externally adhere to the social roles and expectations associated... Oh, I see what he's doing. Okay, so he's... <laughs> oh, you slippery devil. So what, this is what he's doing. So he's saying, okay, okay, fair enough. So you want to say that a, a, uh, 
uh, a woman is a person who would like to internally and externally adhere to the social roles and expectations associated with women, or at the very least, social archetype. And, he's gonna, and then Bogardus is going to go, well, haha, where do you get where do you get the uh, the notion of woman that the social roles and expectations are oriented around? It must be the biological role. N no, no, it, it can be entirely linguistic. So in your cultural context, woman is associated with particular features, uh, with particular uh, roles, particular forms of dress, yada, yada, yada. And somebody wants to adhere to that. Um, it is in this respect fundamentally not structurally different to how people identify religiously, right? This is a, a, a self-description um, based on your authoritative um, first-person assessment of which, if any, uh, socially prevalent categories best represent uh, your characteristics, your, your person. Um, the threat of circularity isn't an issue here because this doesn't have to be justified biologically. It doesn't have to be justified historically. Like, it really doesn't. If you're coming at this from the angle that the category itself is accidental and contingent and problematic, then there's no issue. This is just being kind. This is saying that, hey, there, there are people who um, were raised in a situation in which these categories have a lot of significance to their personal development, to their self-identity. Um, the bare fact that we want to move away from those identities being hegemonic, or for the binary that insists on those identities as, as a necessary component are, are hegemonic, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to then use those hegemonic identities to exclude those people or to like defy those people's self-description because it may indeed be the case that they were constituted by an environment that makes those identifiers um perfectly appropriate um and even if we would like a society of the future to be without those or for those to have less force at the very least um or for those to be uh defined in different ways um maybe entirely pragmatically that's something that that's that's neither here nor there. Um, in in the now, when you're dealing with people from a variety of backgrounds, some of which are downstream from these these views of these categories, um, you you can allow both. You can allow someone who simply identifies as a woman, period, to be treated as a woman, and you can allow someone who identifies as a woman, and and specifically uh, has the intent or the desire to adhere to specific social roles traditionally or historically associated with the category woman. Uh, as a woman as well. Um, and you can treat them both equally as such. There's there's not a contradiction here. He seems to want to have this like this this cathedral like building up of from from the biological up to the self ID view, and he seems to have this notion himself. And therein lies the contradiction. Um because well if we if we abandon the biological view, that is if we abandon sort of reproductive essentialism about the category woman even though that fails, because of course not all not all uh, people who we must still identify as women um, or as genetically female even um, bear these these uh, these uh, these qualities or these attributes. Um, if we can't root it that way, then it just it just becomes it just becomes opinion, right? At a certain level, it's just like, hey, this is a this is just a choice. This is just a, a choice based on preference. It's not based on something external to humanity. It's based on preference. It's based on what we want. To which the obvious retort is, so what? Like, so is the biological, by the way. You just, you kind of fetishize that one. But so what? What's your point, doofus? Like, do, do, you, do, you need to, do you need to have all of your categories be rooted in an abasement before some other ultra or superhuman power that badly Th this is silly by Catherine Jenkins says for example not shaving legs um, Elizabeth Barnes another trans inclusive philosopher points out that um, there might be some women with cognitive disabilities such that they um, lack the ability to have this desire to conceptualize this desire to want to um, adhere to these social roles and um, more relevant for our purposes, it could easily turn out that some trans women might not like... The point is that your categories are exclusionary. So, no, my, my categories are not exclusionary. I'm not insisting on these categories. I'm insisting on an attitude that permits other people who insist on these categories to also exist.
to adhere to these social roles or these expectations. Um, for example, some trans women who say they don't owe you femininity. Um, so the first point was just, if this definition is not circular, then whatever the word woman means in the definition, uh, it's gonna turn out that not all trans women are women. What if it is circular? What if we're told, no, to be a woman is to identify as a woman in the very same sense to be defined. So Vash is not so sure that there's Hang a problem on. Wait, here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, let's go back again a little bit. You pulled something here. Turn out that some trans women might not like to adhere to these social roles or these expectations. Such that the women don't wish to adhere to the social roles and expectations. And the definition used the word woman um, when defining the term. But it may be that there's no actual circularity here if the word woman in the definition means something else than um, the meaning we're supposed to get from this definition. So let me give you one example. Here's something um, Vosh said. He said, if you want, you can say a woman is a person who would like to internally and externally adhere to the social roles and expectations associated with a woman, or at the very least, a social archetype. So again, thread of circularity because we're using the word woman there, but suppose we meant woman in the ordinary sense, adult human females, just suppose that's what was meant. Um, so it's not the very same sense to be defined, um, it's another sense. Well, the problem is that um, many women won't want that. Um, many women don't wish to adhere to the social <laughs> roles and expectations associated oh, with being an I, adult I human female. I, di I didn't fully appreciate how stupid this was before. As Catherine Jenkins has pointed out, a lot of women flout traditional gender norms by, Catherine Jenkins says, for example, not shaving legs. Um, Elizabeth Barnes, another trans-inclusive philosopher, points out that um, there might be some women with cognitive disabilities such that they um, lack the ability to have this desire, to conceptualize this desire, to want to um, adhere to these social roles. And um, more relevant for our purposes, it could easily turn out that some trans women might not like to adhere to these social roles or these expectations. Um, for example, some trans women who say they don't owe you femininity. Um, so the first point was just, if this definition is not circular, then whatever the word woman means in the definition, uh, it's gonna turn out that not all trans women are women. This isn't a definition though. Vosh isn't giving a de definition of, of woman here. He's he's saying like, this is this is a way in which you can treat the category in present day. If you want, you can. That's how it starts. And then he makes specific reference to not just uh, adhere to the social roles and expectations associated with the woman. He insists upon, or at the very least, the social archetype, right? Or at the very least, the social archetype. So what, what he's paying lip service here to is that there are people um, who you should uh, respect the uh, self-identification of who nonetheless have a view of quote unquote woman um, that he disagrees with. So there are trans women, for example, um, who insist on uh, certain biological features, even aesthetically being present before they will consider you to be properly trans. Um, there are people who insist that if you haven't had bottom surgery, you're not really trans. There are people who insist that if you haven't had hormone therapy, you're not really trans, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can disagree with them. And you can disagree with their concept of what is entailed by by woman. You can you can think that that is an, an oppressive and arbitrary way to view it, but you can nonetheless uh, still adhere to a principle that well, um, we nonetheless regard them as a woman because our our threshold isn't um, some outdated uh, cultural term. Our our or not a threshold. Our uh, I guess that would be our threshold, wouldn't it? The, the criteria is is quite literally self-identification because that's what a gender description is for on a view that doesn't um, treat gender categories as being somehow super cultural and, and transcendent. Circular, then whatever the word woman means in the definition. President uh Sunday, are you a trans? Yes. I am, I am, Vosh is a trans, and I am, I, I am trans Vosh. Uh, it's going to turn out that not all... I don't owe you my beardedness. Trans women are women. What if it is circular? What if we're told, no, to be a woman is to identify as a woman in the very same sense to be defined. So Vosh is not so sure that there's a problem here. 
Um, back in May, he said, my definition of gender, which is just a woman is someone who identifies as one. People complain about it being circular, but I don't think that matters. It doesn't matter. So I think it does matter for at least two reasons that okay. I'll try to explain. All right, hang on. We need to take, we need to write this down. So circular, self ID, circular. It's not circular. It's arbitrary. There is a distinction here. The only circularity is in a description that contains the name woman twice. However, if, if what you're what you're doing is just making reference to the fact that there is a prevailing essentialist role such that there is a social phenomenon that you can track that is is not necessarily valid, but nonetheless prevalent enough to sort of brute force um, an impact on how we socially organize. Um, it, it, it appears to be circular because you're saying, well, a woman is someone who identifies as a woman. It's like, well, what's a woman then? But you can just say that, well, the woman is a problematic category. However, from our perspective, we treat as a, we, we call a woman, someone who identifies as a woman, just as we would do the same with any other number of, of um, pragmatic or, or newly invented gender self-descriptions. Um, eventually, the ideal would be, you don't have to do this, because your role in society, and your value, and, and your characteristics are your role and your characteristics and your value and they are not downstream from you get the pink sticker you get the blue sticker you get the blue sticker you get to vote but you die in war you get the pink sticker you don't die in war but you're stuck at home all your life and you can't go to school right that's the ideal not that the the removal of that but anyway so uh Bosch says circularity doesn't matter which it doesn't, but I don't even think it's circular. But let's roll with this. Boogie here says it matters for two reasons. Um, one is that a circular definition can't convey any meaning. It can't actually tell you what the word means. Yeah, but it doesn't. That's the point. It's, it's woman shouldn't mean anything particular. Like it, 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 it shouldn't remain hegemonic. That's that's the point. The the biological view that you're ascribing is itself circular. Like 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 take it down a few more steps. Why are you insisting on on the like fundamentally social role is no less historical than than uh, evolution and, and and evolution is no less historical than social role. Um, but the, the social role we ascribe to different, like, here's, here's a question. What's the, what's the social role of a, um, of a one-armed man versus a two-armed man? Are these, are these different genders? They have, they have radically different capacities. What's the social role of a man who had his genitals blown off in war versus a, a man who did not? Does it change? What's what's the what's the social role? Um, like you, you see how this is just it, it's 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 nonsense. Like yeah, obviously we're a sexually dimorphic species. You require two different organ sets in order to reproduce. Why on earth would that result in um, treating uh, one party as as having like? essential um duties in in a community by itself like from a non-economic standpoint like obviously like it, in a situation where people must reproduce to preserve the species um and there's like a, a like a uh what, what is it called a children of men type scenario um there's like there's like some external cultural pressure for people who can reproduce in a particular role to reproduce in a particular role because the consequences of not doing so are grave. But in a situation where you don't have that necessity, and we really don't right now, um, why on earth would that fact uh, compel you to a specific uh, social expression otherwise? That doesn't make any sense.
Um, but secondly, even if the word has a meaning, it didn't get. You know, Maximo, you're saying leftists deny science. I'm, I was, I'm, I'm citing a science. I'm scientists here in my in my definition of science, right? Like sci science is not just adopting what seems commonsensical to you. In fact, insisting upon categories uncritically is, is profoundly unscientific. It's extraordinarily unscientific. Um, we would still, the sun would still be orbiting us in our perception if, if we took your attitude towards these things. From this definition, but suppose it has a meaning. The statement that to be a woman is to identify as a woman. You never said leftist deny science? What? Oh, sorry, miracle dualist. My apologies, Max. That was miracle dualist. You both start with M. It has to be false. It's necessarily false. So I'll explain these two in turn. So one problem is that circular definition... Being circular doesn't mean it's false. That doesn't mean it's false. It just means it's circular. It may mean it's useless. And it is. That's why people who adopt this view are typically gender abolitionists. <laughs> but but that, doesn't, that doesn't mean it's false. Um, there are a lot of culturally contingent things that rely on a circular basis. Um, I don't know what the hell's going on in philosophy departments. Actually, I do because I've been in one. Um, but they are astonishingly bad at breaking down the limits of, well, I mean, the, the, the relationship between historical contingency and, um, and these categories. I have different theories as to why. I, I think a major one, especially with people who, um, sort of fetishize older philosophy, like Aristotle and onwards. Um, I have a feeling that they are motivated primarily from a disgust at the, uh, the lack of Skyrimness, for lack of a better analogy to hand, the lack of um, romanticism about the way in which um, a lot of modern critical thinkers, you know, treat a lot of the stuff that uh, we identify with the, the, the identities that we inherit from our childhoods, right? And so it's like, oh, these things are, I don't like how, I don't like how, uh, I don't like how these people talk about these things that are supposedly so, so important. I don't like how they all look very, they all wear discordant colors and say rude words while doing so. Um, I, I wish the world was more like Lord of the Rings. I like that kind of feel. I like that kind of vibe. Um, and what are the, uh, what's, what, 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 what do these people cite when they, when they do all these ugly, uh, annoying looking things that rub me the wrong way and often incriminate me personally for my role in sustaining them? You know, things that I obviously don't care about because they don't affect me in the same way. Well, they cite these thinkers, these modern thinkers. And so you'll see a lot of um, you'll see a lot of right wing or, or conservative liberal um, uh, pundits referring to how such and such a modern philosopher just ruined everything. Whether it's Rousseau or Kant or Foucault, Derrida, it's it's ubiquitous. Um, according to Ayn Rand, Kant is the most evil man alive. According to Jordan Peterson, uh, Foucault was just trying to um, slip in the Soviet Union by other means. It's, you know. Darwin belief in two genders? I don't care. I don't, I don't go to the Church of Darwin. Missions can't convey meaning. Here's one way to see that. What we're being told is that someone is a woman, if and only if she identifies as a woman. How many genders are there? Twelve. There are exactly twelve. The twelfth one is other. The eleventh one is um, president. But now suppose we ask, well, what does it mean? What does woman mean there in the definition? What are you identifying as when you identify as a woman? On this alternative, we're being told the very same sense to be defined. So what you're identifying as is someone who identifies as a woman. That's what you're identifying as, because that's what a woman is. 
But notice woman shows up again in the definition. Uh -huh. And so suppose we do another round of recursion. And now the definition says, to be a woman is to be someone who identifies as someone, who identifies as someone, who identifies as, and you see that this will just keep going, will never eliminate the circularity. It, we, we understand dipshit. P people know what an infinite regress is. People who hold to a self-ID view know what an infinite regress is. They aren't saying woman is a cosmic and, and permanent category that is just tied to self-ascription as a woman, which is just tied to self-ascription as they, they, Nobody's arguing that. They're arguing that it's, it's not a universal category and that nonetheless, we should regard people as women who identify as women. This is a normative statement. This is not, this is not an essentialist statement. Gender abolitionists are not Platonists. It goes on forever. We've got this infinite descent. And there's this irredeemable void there in the definition, um, which means that the definition never expresses any proposition. It never actually tells Yeah, yeah. Oh, X is a woman if and only if X identifies. Nobody says this. Nobody says woman is uh, uh, someone who identifies as a woman if and only if they identify as a woman. This is just a pragmatic um, suggestion, ultimately. You regard someone who identifies as a woman as a woman. I mean, obviously, pragmatically, it's also not true. Not everyone who identifies as a woman is a woman, because identification can be understood in two senses. Identification can mean how you understand yourself, and identification can also mean how you present yourself. Case in point, when Lauren Southern uh, said um, dishonestly that she's a man, that she identifies as a man, she's lying. And you can say that without contradiction. She's lying. Um, the reason why you, you take people on good faith is that in most other cases, you don't know what's going on and they have first person authority. When someone like Lauren Southern does it and they give the game away and there's like an obvious political reason for doing so and they also happen to be transphobic besides so that they, they, they contradict the very respect you would otherwise owe to a person as, as a matter of courtesy, frankly. Um, that's, that's, that's fine. Like, there's not, there's no contradiction here. He, he just, he, he literally can't understand the notion of addressing yourself to contingent social issues. You don't have to build this cathedral leading down to the atomic level. That's not how politics works. This is this is layers of contingency. That's the that's the reason for why gender roles are critiqued in the first place. Like here, here's here's the thing. He, Bogardus is acting as if the average uh, gender abolitionist doesn't understand something as simple as how an infant regress works and why that would um, that would stand as a uh, a a valid critique of a sentence as an explanation of a of a of a name or a concept, right? But the self-ID view that he's giving here, he's he's treating as if this is an explanation of what a woman is. But it's not an explanation of what a woman is. It's extolling you to regard people in a specific way based upon self-identification, using woman as a prevalent example. Because it may go on to say that, no, woman bears no inherent qualities. And therefore, the insistence on the category itself at some level is also oppressive. However, there are people who, um, who are to a certain extent coeval, like by at like a physical level, they were born into cultures that uh, insist on those categories, and so their identification being molded by those cultures is indeed most accurately represented by that social category. Sort of like we say we say similar things around the notion of like citizen or human or having rights or person stuff like that. tells you what the word means. It just keeps promising you a meaning if you just do one more recursion, um, but you never get there. So that's one way to see why um, circular definitions are deficient. Here's another way, it's sort of a little sillier, but um, suppose I tell you that you know people collect baseball cards and pogs, I don't really know what a pog is. Um, I collect blargs. And suppose you wonder what a blarg is, and I define it for you in a circular way. I say, look, a blarg is just anything that has this really cool feature. It's a blarg. 
So clearly that's a circular definition. Now, it what's, what's a pog? Look, like this, this is literally his whole argument. Well, hang on a second. If you're saying, if you're saying that, like, like, look, here's, um, here's two ways to think about this. So the, the, the self ID view, actually, do I want to go there? I want to think that one through a little bit more. Um, right. So the, the social role view is insisting against the biological view that the biological view actually is social, right? These are all critiques of the previous layer. So the social role view is a critique of the biological view saying, well, no, biology doesn't actually account for this. Um, when we are describing how society actually identifies women, it describes them by function. And then the self ID view criticizes that view and says, well, hang on, even the functions themselves are clearly not universal. So as a universal uh, categorization scheme, woman doesn't even work socially. Um, however, people still identify as women and they still come out of these cultures or exist in these cultures. And so there is still a reason to identify people as women based upon self-description. What he is doing is treating the critique of something as culturally contingent, um, as in some sense inherently self-contradictory, because it refers to the self-contradictory thing that it's critiquing, which is mind-numbingly stupid. This is, this is so basic. If you really think that there's no problem with circular definitions, then you should be able to find me a blarg, especially if I give you a hint that there's one in the room with you now. There is one in the room with us right now. We are listening to it. And I offer you $50 if you could just find that blarg and bring it to me. Ching. So if there's nothing wrong with circular definitions, you should be able to find a blarg. You should be in a position to know what a blarg is. But obviously, you're not in that position. You can't find this blarg because the definition was circular. So that's another way to see why circular definitions are deficient. Okay, but suppose that somehow the word woman got meaning independently, maybe by pointing or ostention, that's a way that we define words commonly. I think still, even if the word does have a meaning, the claim that to be a woman is to identify as a woman, someone's a woman, if and only if she identifies as a woman, that has to be false. And here's why. Um, on this view, on this proposal, if that phrase being a woman refers to anything, then we're told it refers to a very interesting characteristic, a very interesting feature. It's a feature that someone has if and only if she identifies as having it. There's this tight connection between having the feature, being a woman, and identifying as having the feature. Yes, that's what self-identification. What about names, Thomas? Like it's a, names are a little weird, right? Uh, be, being being a president Sunday refers to the feature that that I identify as as being president Sunday. That's it. That's that's the point. <laughs> it's that's that's the point. That's literally the point. Identifying as a woman. But if you think about it, um, I think you'll realize that there simply is no feature like that. There's no characteristic that you could have if and only if you identify as having it. There's well, if the feature is self-identification, then yes, there is. You're, you're treating the self-identification as something separate from the self-identification. The entire point here is that the self-identification is, is the only thing that matters because we're not insisting on previous cultural attitudes that we don't inherit, that we don't share, that we've critiqued. That's the point. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't go, uh, it, it's, it's the same thing as like, you, you wouldn't go, um, to Germany as like an American, have somebody introduce themselves as Frau something and go, no, you are Mrs. That's the, like, this, this is. Oh my god. This guy's a philosophy PhD? Jesus Christ, this is embarrassing.
There's no way you could be if and only if you identify as being that way. Just think about ordinary features like um, the function of names and other nouns are quite different. Uh, not not really actually. Um, like <laughs> no no actually actually they aren't different a at all. Um, they're they're literally just pointing and saying this is we are calling this this. And sometimes when you call this this, you haven't actually accurately partitioned out something that is truly distinct in, in its environment from other things that you are assuming in this present moment are not this. Like you're you're just you're just wrong, unfortunately. I'm I'm sorry. Um I mean, case in point, like, like, what do you think nominalism is? It's, 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 it's insisting upon the idea that all of our concepts are, are arbitrary namings of things at some level. That are, that our reasoning is, is downstream from like a, a system of, of, of named things. Oh, thank you for the two dollars, Rixai. I appreciate that. Um, being funny or being tall or being rich or something like that. It's one thing to be rich. It's something else to identify as being rich. You could be rich without identifying as being rich. You could identify as being rich without actually being rich and so on. And this. Bogardus is also an American Catholic who are notorious for being very dumb when it comes to their own tradition and philosophy in general. just holds generally for every feature, any property you choose, any feature you choose. Um, and so what that means, what one and two entail here is on this view. Oh, actually, case in point. <laughs> um, where's that miracle doofus? Miracle duelist. Uh, you know, the Bible refers to bats as birds, right? The phrase being a woman doesn't refer to anything because there's no feature that answers to this definition. Ad hom, no, that's an insult, Maximo. Um, and I had, can't believe myself to explain this to people in 2022. An ad hominem fallacy uh, is when you use an insult against a person as the basis of a, uh, a refutation of their argument. Um, you're wrong because you're stupid. That's ad hominem, right? Uh, you're allowed to insult people and then give a cogent critique of their argument as well. You're allowed to say, um, no, your argument fails because of X, Y, and Z, as I will lay out here. Um, and by the way, you're stupid for thinking that your argument holds despite these. That's perfectly fine. That's not an ad hominem argument. Finishing. That's not an ad hominem fallacy. It is ad hominem. Just who gives a shit? The point is it's fallacious, right? Um, it, it's like grow, grow a pair, bluntly. There's no such thing. And so um, a kind of surprising result is on this view, it looks like there are no women. And there are no trans women, therefore. And for our purposes, what follows is um, it's false. No, it was used as an ad hom. No, it wasn't used as an ad hom. That was just that's just a note. Hey, by the way, uh, this person is is sort of part of a group of people who are kind of known for being very bad on these topics. And explain to me how that's informing my critique so far, or informing their critique. That's just a statement of fact. I mean, it's it's being borne out by what we're seeing here. It's that all trans women are women, or at least it's not true. Um, in fact, it looks like none are, because there are no women at all. Okay, um, here's a couple other views. I think those are sort of the big three, but here are some other views that have been discussed um, by Vosh. One is gender abolition. On this view, ideally, there are no genders. So, ideally, women don't exist. No, I ideally, the category woman doesn't exist. Not ideally, individuals in the world right now who identify as women don't exist. This is a social ideal. Ideally, there are no gendered impositions on individual subjects. Here's Vosh expressing that sort of view. I think gender is a destructive concept, he says, so eventually I want it gone. Sally Haslinger, trans-inclusive philosopher at MIT, says something similar. She adopted a social role view. She thought to be a woman is to be oppressed. So she says a main um, part of the project of feminism is to eliminate women, <laughs> which sounds kind of surprising. Um, no, no, it doesn't. You're just very stupid. Um, the, the category woman 
See, in fact, look right here. She's very careful. Although, of course, we should not aim to do away with females. She's making a distinction between the gendered category woman and the biological role of reproduction, which is perfectly fair. You can refer to people as, as female, as being those which bear these particular biological properties. That is to say, they have a particular um, capacity reproductively that other members of society don't have. Um, so long as you're not insisting again on anything further than that. In fact, given the latenness of that term, it might be better to move on to something else. And other people have, for example. There's a tendency, it sounds cringe, but it actually is quite effective. There's referring to birthing individuals, right? Which is doing exactly the same thing that the notion of woman does in a non-gendered way. You are referring to a, a, a specific biological capacity. Um, and, and that's all. And there's, there's nothing contradictory about this. I mean, case in point, the bare fact that people are actually continuing to refer to these things means that they're actually being very particular about preserving our, our scientific knowledge of, of reproductive roles. What they, are, what they are being careful about doing is separating the biological role from a social role because these are not intrinsically connected. There is, there is a connection. Like, there are, for example, things that a birthing individual cannot do during a certain period of time that a non-birthing individual can do. But that's not intrinsically tied to, to biological sex, because not all people um, who, are, who have, like, female sex organs are birthing people. And in fact, there's actually a, a like, it, it's, it's just, this is just a really basic failure to think through critically what he's saying. This is, this is really like, like he's just, th this is the problem with having contempt for your opponents philosophically. Um, you think you're very smart by comparison. And so you argue with the phantom in your head. You're arguing with a sock puppet. And you never actually engage them on their own terms. The fact that he would quote Sally Haslanger in this way and then say this demonstrates beyond the shadow of a doubt that he did not read Sally Has Haslanger care carefully, <clears throat> or perhaps even at all. He fished for quotes. Um, which is not, by the way, something that PhDs do not do. There are a lot of people uh, in academia, there are a lot of people with PhDs with high-level degrees, um, who are practically complete frauds if you understood what they actually did to generate their, their material. And it is always alarming. It is always a matter of concern. It's not always damning. Sometimes people actually engage with uh, popular discourse for a reason, for a good reason. And they do good work that way. But it's always very alarming when a PhD attacks uh, another uh, philosopher like this against people who he thinks are not in a position to actually parse these out. And he must think so. Um, this is a laughable critique of Sally Haslinger. It's a laughable critique of Bosch, even. This is just this is just laughably stupid. And you call yourself a feminist, but you don't want women to exist? Typical leftist madness. Um, but that was her view. So um, I think we can at least agree that on this view, if you ask um, how things should be ideally, um, they would say ideally, uh, there are no women at all. And they would say, ideally, there are no trans women. Uh, so that's a kind of surprising implication of that view. Here's another one, which I think Vosh might want to defend today. He said... Was this was this a debate on trans women specifically or just trans people in general? Well, it's also about trans people in general, but the topic of the debate is, are all trans women women or are trans women women? As, um, in his opening statement that he says prescriptively, trans women are women. So that's another view that I've heard expressed in his videos. Um, on this view, when you say trans women are women, um, what you're actually doing is giving a kind of command or prescription. You're saying you should speak and act as though trans women or women is literally true. You should speak and act as though trans women or women is literally true. Yes. And if you ask why, as Vosh said in his opening statement, it's justified. Here's the thing. The self-ID view is the prescriptive view. These are identical. There's no distinction between them. The prescriptive view is that you should treat people who identify as women because there are women, there are people who identify as women because of their culture. And that doesn't cease to matter just because it's because of culture. They were still brought up to have specific capacities that are relevant to that culture. 
we do with a host of other areas as well to this day. Again, we talk about citizens. What the hell is a citizen? Citizen isn't an essential category of human being. That doesn't that doesn't um, that doesn't transcend culture. That's an entirely cultural uh, thing. Sunday, I think you missed Kant's point that without the categories, you can't have any reason to hold the possibility of a thing existing. No, that's that's my my point. Like I, I know we think categorically. The question is why these particular categories, and we aren't we aren't even talking about categories of like you understand by the way that like the the categories for Kant are are downstream from a a capacity to perceive and to to think that we cannot get outside of right like the entire reason why it's called a critique of pure reason is that these things don't take us anywhere outside of the contingently human you you get critical philosophy from kant <laughs> He didn't carry it as far as he could have, but that's, that's the move. ...by utility, by good consequences, by benefits. Um, so here's a statement of Vash uh, sort of expressing that. So he says, um, what people mean when they say they're women is, woman is a social category I'd like to be a part of. I want to think of myself as, a, as part of it and be thought of as part of it. Um, Tali May Betcher, a trans philosopher, says something similar. That's right, what's that addressing? If you get rid of the category of trans women, then you wouldn't be justified in saying that trans women still exist? Yeah, obviously. Yes, yeah, Sunday, I'm sure you brought that up. Oh, you're talking about the, the other thing. I'm sure they brought that up not to try and dismantle his argument via saying he belongs to a dumb group. No, I'm pretty sure he brought that up because a lot of their arguments are dismantled. And it's been observed, um, or it's been it's been judged, that as a result of this category of, of thinker consistently <laughs> seeming um, to produce easily dismantleable arguments, uh, that this is a dumb group. You're, you're getting the order of causality wrong here. That's kind of important. Trans inclusive and queer communities, gender presentation indicates how you want to be treated. So if you think that we should treat people how they want to be treated, then when you say trans women are women, what you might be communicating is we should treat people how they want to be treated. We should treat trans women how they want to be treated. Okay, and again, it's justified by utility. So I'll just point out with respect to the prescriptive claim, whether this is something we should do, something that doesn't seem to enter into... Um, well, it doesn't have to be justified justified by utility it could be justified by like sentiment you could for example just have like a general love for your fellow human being such that you don't want to oppress them with unnecessary contingent categories and you can recognize that that insisting on these categories does so and you have no extrinsic reason for continuing to do so otherwise and so you simply have a predisposition to be kind that doesn't mean it's from the position of utility like like there may be no utilitarian calculus at all and you could still fall into this exact this exact view, like uh, gender genders have have extraordinary utility. They allow you to enslave a large part of your population. No, it's again utility the utility of whom, but like th th this is this is silly. This is this is a, a a silly and unimaginative and and remarkably ignorant exposition of, of the gender abolitionist position and the self-ID position. This is this is just stupid. I'm actually I, I'm surprised. I, I I must have not been paying attention. This is the when when this debate initially went down. This is really stupid. Everybody's moral calculations is whether or not what we're saying is true. Well, 60, and 60 seconds uh, left. 60 seconds left. Okay. And given what I've said so far, it looks like this statement trans women are women is uh literally not true. And so we can at least agree on that if we have no no the, the statement uh trans women are not members of a culture of a universal and culturally transcendent category is not true but that's not the statement under debate the statement is are trans women women and in the context in which these words have meaning 
guess from from the position of somebody who is critical of the essentiality of these terms because what a woman is is somebody who identifies as a culturally contingent category um that bears a whole ton of uh like like contradictory content depending on who you ask but that nonetheless is registered socially as as something with some kind of weight and therefore if somebody identifies as a woman they are treated differently than if they don't and so if somebody thinks that that's how they should be treated and your 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 ethic around this thing is to treat people how they think they should be treated in this particular way then you do so this, this is this is not complicated asked this prescriptivist view strictly speaking literally are all trans women women i think given what we've said the view has to agree with has to say no Okay, let's see if I can fit this in. I ran out of space on my slide, but sometimes Vosh seems to be a nihilist or an anti-realist about gender. Nihilism and anti-realism are not the same thing. That is so... Oh my god. Pragmatists can be anti-realists. They aren't nihilists. There are, there are specific points to human life. They're, they're, they're explicitly anti-nihilists. They find the, the purpose and meaning... Um, in, in human existence and things and what in, in the purposes that we set for them and in our desires. You can't just say stuff like this. This guy is coming into this as, as like an expert with credentials. Um, sometimes he says gender concepts are arbitrary social designations and in reality there are no men, no women, etc. Here's a quotation from Bosch back in 2019 saying all categories are socially constructed. They don't exist in nature. We built them. So if you hold that view and then you ask, well, really, literally, um, are all trans- Hey, Doofus, do you know how Aristotle begins all of his descriptions of categories, socially and politically, etc.? These are spoken of this way. Many talk about it this way. Here's some inconsistencies. This is how, in fact, we should talk about it to balance out these inconsistencies. That's how he goes about it. He literally starts with common use of language to discern how we can correct them to make these more coherent functionally even if not even if not in his conclusions functionally he starts in the same base as somebody who ends up being an anti-realist about these categories um he's he's not critical in the way later philosophers are so he doesn't realize this but you're you're not you're not presenting a critique of anti-realism you're presenting an uninformed precursor to anti-realism you're 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 less philosophically evolved in essence. That's that's the problem here. We have actually quite literally progressed beyond this because we got to this point by critiquing and developing arguments taken on by these earlier thinkers. When you read these philosophers, Halle, ha Sally Hasslinger, et cetera, et cetera, Jenny Saul, um, uh, Judith Butler, et cetera, et cetera, when you go when you read them, you will see them actually responding to and critiquing people who are responding to and critiquing. Da, 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 down the line, and it will go all the way back to the first philosophers. It, it'll go all the way back to pre-philosophical poetry. Trans women, women, I think the view has to say no. In reality, no. Okay, so I tried to show that the statement trans women or women is not true on every view we've looked at, including five from Bosch. Thank you for your attention. Okay, well, I think we've... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Somebody asked me earlier if at the end of this, if I would, if I would uh, seek out a debate with uh, Bogardus. I would, but I'm going to make a prediction. This is going to be one of those people where he's going to be like, well, I looked through your coverage, and you were mean to me, so I don't think it's going to be productive conversation. I would put money down on that. Yeah, this is a debate, Ico. Okay, well... Well... We don't really need to see Vosh's take on that. Let's, um, let's figure out where we're going next on this issue. So this is Bogardus, we read the abstract earlier, this is Bogardus' paper that we're going to be using as sort of a roadmap.
There we go. Or I guess, um... That works. Some internal problems with revisionary gender concepts. Um... Well, uh, some critical points of interest were Hasslinger. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to spend a couple of days going over Hasslinger's uh, essays here. Um, Somebody knocking, or is that hammering? I think it's hammering. And then we're going to look at uh, Jennifer Saul's Gender and Race. And then we're going to go through this. We're going to get a robust understanding of, of the terms of, of those papers. Oh, and Jenkins, of course. We need to go through Jenkins as well. We're going to spend a couple of days going through Jenkins, Hasslinger, and Saul. Um, and then we're going to do a thorough breakdown of Bogardus's paper. So if I, if I break this timeline down, if we do one paper per day, it's Tuesday today, that'll be, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, and then on Tuesday, we'll be going through this. And then I think what I'll do is I'll actually upload, uh, the entire... Um, set of segments about this issue into one long video. So we have like the full thorough critique in one place. And then we're going to start looking at his uh, coverage of the Matt Walsh video and things like that. I think this, this arc, if you will, will take about a little, a little under two weeks. Um, it won't be absorbing all of our content. We'll be doing different segments. Like today we're going to be going on to, when I come back from break, we're going to go on to reviewing uh, Loner Box versus Poly People. But um, it will be it will be the first segment for a number of uh, streams coming up. Anyways, uh, I'm going to take a 15 or so minute, no, 15, I'm going to be back in a few minutes. Um, and we're going to uh, we're going to look at the loner box and poly people debate. So grab coffee, come back, and we will suffer together.
so we're back. We are back. What are we doing? We are looking at poly people versus loner box, or loner box versus poly people. Either or. Well, this is an hour and 34 minutes long. I don't think the whole thing is the debate, but we'll watch a little bit of the introduction and we'll see where it goes. <sighs> this is going to be... Uh... This is going to be ugly, isn't it? Great. Because now like, um... I cannot scroll my timeline on, on, on stream, like for sure. No. That's never yeah. a really good idea, period. But like, nonsensical attacks. They're throwing shit at a wall yeah. and see whatever sticks. You're not yeah. going to debate the shit. It doesn't it doesn't like do it doesn't work. Yes. <laughs> you're just giving them more like Yes. Just you're just you're adding to the um Do not debate them. Do their, not. Like engagement that the algorithm sees and also might I add mm. that we we talk about Do not debate them. Kill them in a video game. Just eat them. This the other day on stream we were um to this genocide. I think mm. Oh, there's a genocide. Oh, Maybe no. Other people have to see. Let's find out who's getting genocide. Turfs are genocide. Okay. Them, but a collective response of like everyone block. Turfs are genocidal. They want to eradicate a category of person. A genocide can be um, cultural as well. We talk about this frequently. If you're um, eliminating a category of person, even if that category is, is culturally determined, as indeed all categories of person are, uh, that's that's still genocidal in nature. We don't typically refer to it as only removing um, specific genetic inheritances, as indeed like uh, no actual like biological genocide has ever done. Anyways, by actual I mean like like literal. Blocking Voosh. Everyone yeah, blocking yeah, yeah. any of these assholes to like cut them out, like make them unable to engage, period. Praxis. Yeah, I was definitely speaking from like a cis white uh, point of privilege Disgusting. there. Disgusting. Yeah, because that, oh yeah, I can, I can just mute people. It's cis white privilege to mute people rather than blow. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. God. That I, I want to make sure we can we can discuss this. Just how genocidal turfs are, because when we uh, say turfs are genocidal, and I know we've been using that word a lot to describe what's happening. Uh, who are these people? I don't know who DJ Mule is. Who's this one? Oh, oh, that's Kira Chats. Okay. Um, in various parts of the world. Yeah. I'm talking right now specifically about the UK and the US, but mm -hmm. it's not exclusive to these two parts of the world. Um, of what uh people are. I don't think turfs want to genocide anyone, really. Well, that's... <laughs> I mean, since they don't regard the category of trans woman as any... Or as trans... Uh, man, really, I should say. Is, well, trans categories generally as anyone. Um, I mean, I guess... They, they wouldn't see it that way. But that's kind of immaterial. That's Bad Bunny, now known as Kira Chats. Okay. So that's who Bad Bunny is. Doing to... Like, transphobes are doing to trans people... Uh, including trans children and i know we've been calling that genocide and it's true but yeah, it doesn't def change the fact that this is definitely compatible with the uh, with any working definition of genocide that's ever been used fuck me you know the thing is like I would it is though like for example um breaking down uh Uyghur cultural identity by forcing them into work camps and re-education facilities that's that fits very well within the cat within the uh within our understanding of cultural genocide um same thing with residential schools like the goal clearly wasn't um to to breed indigenous canadians out of existence but it was to remove their culture and to eliminate them as a distinct people or as distinct peoples i mean same same here um the goal is to uh or, or the the orientation rather is to treat trans people in such a way as the category disappears, but not in like a gender abolitionist sense, um, in favor of returning to 
a gender essentialist sense, albeit one um, more positively uh, uh, disposed towards women as opposed to men, uh, with the result that uh, trans people just disappear from social existence. We just don't talk about them or recognize them anymore. They're depersoned. They unexist. I do know that Lonerbox acknowledges that cultural genocide is a thing. He seems to draw a distinction between that and genocide itself, I think. He might go into it here. But, th like, that's neither here nor there. Like, it, it, it's, it's hardly... It hardly makes it better to say, well, hey, the people we want to get rid of, we want to get rid of them um, on grounds other than their genes in particular. And, and for the record, you, even the notion of, of the genetic as a category isn't actually specifically limited to genes in that literal sense. Like we talk about, for example, genealogies in the sense of um, familial, social, and cultural, and linguistic inheritances. So, like, I, I don't know. We'll see. I don't, like, I don't like either of these two people either to begin with, so... My disposition is not to want to root for them against Loner Box here, but. And we're getting this decontextualized, but this seems. I'm not I'm not liking the flippancy. I would love any of these people who are saying that there's a fucking trans genocide happening. I would ask them, like, do you think that the state of trans rights in the UK or the US is even gonna go back to like 2005 levels or two? Yeah. I mean they're they're literally trying to push it out of being even being discussed in a school setting. <clears throat> there's a there's a massive part of the population, a, a very well resourced and powerful part of the population um, that wants trans people treated as clowns. 2010 levels because everyone knows the answer to that and it's no we're not even going to go back to those times when why why do you think so this is silly why on earth do you think so on what basis would you say this like what 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 like uh what, what are they called like ratchets like what 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 thing did we hit what irreversible move did we make um that makes it so that we can't have like similarly exclusive and bigoted um uh, norms and policies around these things. They've been proposed by people with the ear of the former president. May have the ear of the future president. Like this, this is this is silly. The only thing you would say to them is like, "You're the T slur." When that was the default word for them, we're not even going back to that. We're getting pushed back against like the fact that more kids are getting access to care now. That's what's happening, and that's a big fucking problem, all right? But you're not just getting pushback, though, Loner. You're not just getting verbal pushback. You're getting actual policy proposals by a party that may well take the White House um, that would uh, remove our capacity even to think in a public sense about these issues. Like, they're, it, it, would, it would turn the category of trans people into itself something that's treated in a similar manner as a slur. It ought not to be spoken in public. Right? That's an attempt at like erasure and all that shit, but it's not a fucking genocide. Like stop, stop just like, oh God damn it. Fuck. And when there is no, more you're not getting closer to genocide. Stop. You're not getting closer to gen Stop. You're not doing it. Okay. Not happening. It's not ha okay. You're getting close to some people getting denied healthcare and that's really fucking shit. And then you're going to, you're going to respect, you're going to respond by being like, Hey, hey, yeah, you, you, you're telling me it's not that bad. No, look at any genocide and just be like. Okay, let's just uh, you know check some boxes here. And you guys want me to debate Vush about it? It's just like you understand. There's a reason I don't want to, right? And the reason is that there's no. This is cut, so I don't know if important parts are cut out. But I'm assuming, if somebody wants to correct me on this or send me a better version, that what's being cut out are just spaces, like just pauses way i come out of that discussion looking good because it just sounds like I'm downplaying, and I'm not downplaying. I don't think people should downplay. What's happening to trans people in America? These bills are awful, but you're calling it a genocide. <laughs> Does this really mean that the state of trans rights until like 2014 or whatever was genocidal? Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, that's, that's exactly what it means. 
Um, the, the state of trans rights was to regard them as a category of person who in some cases must be um, preemptively prevented from existing or expressing itself by way of uh, keeping access to treatments that allow people to more effectively present as, as um, uh, the correct gender um, prior to puberty and things like that, as well as to uh, treat the category as inherently uh, sexualized in a way that it would be inappropriate to even discuss them amongst people who themselves are a part of that category and are nonetheless facing uh, permanent biological changes, albeit those inflicted by the blind forces of nature. Um, which is not how we treat things like cancer, for example, even though the, uh, the suicide rate is ridiculous amongst people who are not able to get those treatments. I'm trying to figure out what the sticking point is here exactly. So what's, what's the issue with calling it a genocide pragmatically? Let's assume that there was a rigid, a rigid definition of genocide that specifically said it is only genocide if they are literally putting people into camps, lining them up against the wall and shooting them. And only on the basis of genes, right? Or let's even leave that out. Let's assume that Loner uh, accepts uh, the idea of cultural genocide. Somebody in the chat seemed to indicate that he did. I mean, one of the reasons why we have the notion of cultural genocide is precisely because people can go about depersoning or unexisting groups of people without resorting to Auschwitz. Right? Like, you can, you can remove these people from discourse. You can break down the capacity of these people to publicly organize by um, stigmatizing the identity, indirectly or directly. Um, you can remove access to resources from these people such that uh, the likelihood of these individuals rising to a kind of political personhood such that they can advocate for themselves as a group diminishes radically. Like, poverty and, and substance abuse and all these different things are rampant in the trans community, partially because, in large part, because of how stigmatized they are. These are not people who are generally treated well by their communities. So attempting to exacerbate that by limiting access more uh, to medical treatment, by restricting our capacity more to discuss this or to or to naturalize the concept so we can understand them as something other than alien and weird when we're coming out of childhood. I I don't what, what's the issue with characterizing that as genocidal? It seems at the very least to be oriented to the same result. And um once you, once you meet the result, it's a little bit too late to go, well, hey, I guess this was genocidal. What, what, do, what is the cost of exaggeration here exactly? Besides offending loner box, like, wh what is it? Like, come on, guys, that's not very nice. It's not a very strong retort um, to a political movement that actually wants them eliminated, that would actually advocate for them being totally disappeared if they could. Does anybody recall why Rakita Law was uh, knocked off of YouTube? Like, massive channel. Massive. Thousands of viewers at a time. Bigger than Destiny. I think he had, like, over a million subscribers, didn't he? Just yeeted from YouTube. It's because uh, he addressed uh, Keffels directly and uh, told her that if it was up to him or something like that, or, or like, she should get the wall, too. <laughs> Which I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he meant like, uh, uh, he should be on the defensive side in a game of wall ball or something, and, and not like him, him directly imagining, publicly, uh, lining up people of Keffel's description and shooting them.
that there's been a uh, there's been a genocide against trans people happening for the last six thousand years. Okay, uh, here's here's what's actually bothering me too. Um, I've noticed a lot of streamers get into this mode, even streamers who I otherwise respect or, or political like YouTubers that I respect, they get into this mode where it's like they'll argue with chat and they'll kind of adopt. Uh, weirdly, Vosh does this less than a lot of these people. They kind of adopt the Destiny thing where he'll go into like an expositional rant against a sentence in chat. And he'll get really pumped up in the course of doing so. And I don't think he really is pumped up. I think what's going on is that's a defensive maneuver. Um, wherein you appear as if you are hyper-knowledgeable about a thing. And you just batter them down with a whole bunch of stuff that they, having only text to access, can't really respond with. They can't really, like, uh, levy a effective retort to. Years, or since the dawn of humans, of, of the dawn of humanity, we've been genociding trans people because that's basically we're not even we're not even going back to that, but that's what we're calling it. Why does that matter? Because I want to see if your I want to see if your definition holds up. Do you think that like the last five ten years have just been? If you think that trying to educate uh, indigenous uh, students out of their culture is a cultural genocide then you think that trying to educate people out of the existence of trans people, which includes, by the way, trans students themselves, um, out of having even a concept of what transness is, or, or, or of like a gender critical uh, attitude is, or anything of those sort, that's also cultural genocide. It's more dispersed, it's less localized around like a land-bearing uh, unit, but it's the same basic move. It's the same thing. It even has a lot of the same results, although uh, less incidentally. Um, in the case of uh, indigenous students, like those that have been found in, in unmarked graves fairly recently um, within the residential school system, they were kidnapped off the street, put into extraordinarily bad and, and often very abusive, as if that itself wasn't highly abusive, uh, highly abusive conditions, and a lot of them died. Um, more often than not, due to things like uh, like rampant illness and things of that sort, but a lot of them died as a result of uh, those bigoted actions. Um, that will also happen to trans students um, who are denied any kind of access to care or even the capacity to talk publicly about their situation. It's it's the same it's the same move. Different, like, external relationships and factors conducing to it, but it's the exact same move, fundamentally. So, I don't know. When when you start talking like this, it's like, but when you talk about duh, 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 and you're, like, frantically going after your chat like that, people get really dumb. And Lonerbox isn't dumb, but he should know better, which is why this is a little bit strange and us coming out of a trans genocide. I think we should maybe, well, I think what we could do instead is just look up a few genocides and look at uh, why they were deemed genocides, uh, why people pushed back on it maybe, or why it crossed the threshold and what evidence was required to call it a genocide. I think we should maybe look at that one day. Wish you were as passionate about Lav's transphobic takes as you are about- What about, uh, what about what people identify as religions or nations or things of that sort? Because um, one thing that happens as a consequence of, of, of genocidal action is that these categories disappear and common use stops regarding the destruction of these groups as inherently genocidal. It helps in the case of the Jewish Holocaust that we were at war with Germany, so we categorically denied their categories. Um, but like, let's, let's take Japan, for example. Do, does anybody really talk about the, um, the genocidal dissolution of, of the... Uh, tribal diversity that was actually very much the case in Japan prior to the consolidation the consolidation consol yeah consolidation of the uh, Japanese identity as a, as a modern European style state no not really we, we, in fact um it's 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 often remarked upon how homogenous Japan is in large measure that was achieved by the effectiveness of its genocidal actions on its own people who became its own people through those genocidal actions, to be clear as well. Um, Japan was not, until very recently historically, 
a single unified entity with a firm inside and outside the way we talk about like the borders of the United States or something. Uh, folks being a bit hyperbolic about terrible shit happening just saying all right ziggy video about british transphobia video about british transphobia video about british transphobia where is my there is no trans genocide video are you confusing passion with just like i don't know performative like frustration or whatever the reason i'm a bit more calm with people i like love is because she does exactly what i expect of her you are aesthetics brained by saying that fuck you i will always devote more fucking energy in my life to attacking transphobia. I mean, calling someone aesthetics brained when they're not in direct conversation with you is is sort of performative. I mean, this is a performance based medium, so I'm not necessarily down in it for that, but I, I'm not really seeing the distinction here. To attacking my own side when they call that trans genocide, okay? That's not changing. Yeah, I expect it from Lavloon. <laughs> I don't expect people like, oh God. I think we're at the beginning stages of a potential genocide. Okay, that's a bit more acceptable because you can look at the stages of genocide and be like stage one, two, three, four, five of dehumanization, of otherization, of mistreatment, like uh, legal mistreatment, all that. Yeah, you can see all of that. Problem is like- It's not a genocide until they've done it, apparently. Every ethnic minority in every country in the fucking world is at some stage of genocide, <laughs> okay. The problem is like that's not what makes it a genocide yeah that's that's why you shouldn't be a liberal okay that just means that we have like systemic discrimination and like unequal rights that's not genocide though you know what's really funny is that historians i want to show you the difference here right historians will actually have this debate as well is your i know i can't have this discussion because your brains are going to melt you're going to short circuit and your brains will just leak out of your ears would you describe um nazi rhetoric before 1941 as genocidal because believe it or not genocidal rhetoric first of all is not genocide but also like maybe a better question is was it a genocide until 1941 like before 1941 was no, there wasn't an industrial genocide before the industrial genocide started, Loner Box. But nonetheless, the groundwork was being laid for that to be an actual solution. That is indeed what it was called, because the problem was identified as being the presence of a traitorous backstabbing group, supposedly, uh, within the German population. They attributed the, um, the uh, failure of uh, Germany in the war, and, and with the bad terms that they ended up having to accept, uh, at at uh, the Paris Peace Conferences, and we're still at Versailles, um, to uh, socialists and Jews uh, conniving to undermine them from within. What what do you do with a uh, with a group of people who are conniving to undermine you from within, Monsieur Box? You get rid of them, don't you? Well, riddle me this. How do you do that? What was happening? A genocide. Was there enough there to say you are convicted of genocide? You are guilty of genocide? The answer to that is no. You can look at the rhetoric as well. Um, the stab in the back narrative actually preempts the surrender of Germany. There are lots of quotes. I can <clears throat> read you a few because I've got a list here. There's like, um, but the question is like whether or not there was a display of genocidal intent. So from like Hitler, uh, so post 1941, there's plenty. It's all over the place. Like there's all the letters, there's all the fucking communications, the orders given, and obviously the camps themselves. The fact that it happened. pre 1931, there's loads of it. There's there's loads of it for a long ass time. Um, this was not unique to the to the Nazis in power or at war. Happened. That, that's all there. But when we're talking about like Hitler in 1919, there's like uh, I think the quote that he gave there was about um, uh, Germany will be Germany, whatever. When the Jews were deprived of all rights, systematically and legally, and then removed altogether. There's an ambiguity. There's an ambiguity about the word removal. Uh, in Mein Kampf, he said something similar. No, there's not. There is no ambiguity. There is none. You were purging an ethnic group from a space. Boom. That's it. That's it. Like, here's a question. Is it less genocidal if they push them onto a boat as opposed to into the sea without a boat? No, from the vantage of, of the world of the German state, they have been eliminated. They've been unpersoned. They've been less bodily killed, although it's also possible that the ship sinks or what have you. But they've still been destroyed as as people within within the german community it's it's still genocide or 
as well. Um, we'll carry on the struggle until the last Jew is removed. That's 1919 as well. Uh, Kristallnacht, um, the rationale they gave there for opening up the first camps was actually, well, this is what they said anyway, very debatable. What they said was that they were doing it to protect Jews from uh, violence against like locals. Which would kind of undermine your whole notion that we can only call it a genocide based on the avowed intents of, of the actors, right? I mean, first of all, we, we have the avowed intent of a lot of these actors. They want these categories of people gone. In some cases, they, they express wishes for violence to be done to individual members or for them collectively. They regard them as equivalent to groomers and pedophiles. But moreover, that's that's neither here nor there, because we can still make inferences about what the effects of these policies will be. It will be the destruction of our capacity to even talk about these people as if they were people. You're, a, a person isn't just like a biological organism. It's the social existence of that organism as something with an identity and rights and like a role in society and things like that. That's why it's a, literally comes from a, a, a word that we, we used to describe originally as like a theater mask. This is this is the presentation of the individual as as a, a member of a society of intelligent uh, social beings. Um, what you're effectively doing is asking for the destruction of the entire category of masks. Get all the blue masks out. They are, they, they, no, they are no longer part of the play. And they'd rather than obviously prosecute the people who did it. Yeah, and jobs. Yeah, jobs are the other thing. There was like an SS journal that said that the Jews will be, um, uh, will face fire and sword. Again, it's a like, but when you look at all these uh, events, all these negotiations that happened before 1941, there's like um, the Schacht uh, Rubli negotiations, which is where Hitler, uh, he, in 1938 to 39, he agreed to release like, like over 100,000 German Jews and to give them part of their property and to give them like just enough of the, to give them a fraction of the wealth that was seized from them so they could establish themselves in a new country to join families who had already fled. Uh, there were the Madagascar plans, which were about, you know, that was um, the first time they used the term final solution. Only the first time it was used was territorial final solution. Um, then there is actually the Himmler Memorandum in 1940, where uh, the uh, idea of mass murder was rejected. Uh, then there's 1940 again, where Hitler orders to expel Jews to France, um, and he implies they go to Madagascar af afterwards. There's the plan in 1941, early 1941, where they actually say what they want to do is to uh, deport Jews to allied nations that were fighting Germany, because they thought the allied nations would be so disgusted by the Jews who arrived there that they would understand the Nazis' point. <laughs> that was actually something they thought as well. Um, but then they realize eventually that they've got like 5 million Jewish prisoners in fucking Poland and there's just, there's way too many of them to deport like whilst fighting a war. So 1941, there's a big meeting held in, um, uh, mid March and it's mostly assumed there that Hitler orally gave the order to, uh, start killing people and then they go for it. Yeah. But the point is, is that people can have genocidal rhetoric for like 10, like 10 plus years. And we're talking about a much more extreme case than what's happening to trans people in the U.S., okay? <laughs> like, fuck. That's all Okay, so... Well, h hang on. They can have genocide... Also, why, actually, since we've got the Vouch fans in here, the question of uh, whether or not Professor Flowers was... Gen is, he, is he arguing that because there's a span... A whole... Like, ten whole years of genocidal rhetoric before uh, Auschwitz... Ten whole years. It's far away. That's that's not a lot of time, loner. That's like genocidal rhetoric now. Can in potential equal mass murder in the span of ten years in a modern state. In a modern liberal state. The, 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 you're not making this sound better. Ten years is nothing. That's nothing. Loner, my dude, you're smarter than this. Come on.
genocidal? The answer, if you want to be as accurate as possible, the answer would be no. Because she tried to use examples like Kenya, where white people left, but like kind of voluntarily and peacefully. But she assumed that... No, no. Okay. In the argument Professor Flowers had with Vosh, she didn't, ex she didn't make any genocidal arguments. In the arguments uh, pr uh, Professor Flowers had with Ahim, she didn't make any genocidal arguments. Um, her categorical statements that associate race with a specific uh, villain-victim thing, they could. They could become that. Now, they couldn't become that here. Practically, it's impossible. But they could become that, and they have become that in certain places. There's not a contradiction there. Do I think it's something she's blameworthy for? No, in part because we're talking about that here. And in part because in the context of that conversation, she was being treated uncharitably. But it's perfectly it's perfectly plausible. One of my major critiques of her is that she still insists on essentially um, state-derived categories that entail genocidal action down the line. Now that's ubiquitous. I don't I don't think again like she's personally blameworthy for that. And I think a lot of people engage in that same kind of rhetoric. I think Vosh did a little bit in that discussion, or at the very least he he paid a, uh, he carried water for it. I don't think he meant to, but he did. Um I don't even think uh like I think Lonerbox is doing so here as well. I don't think he means to, but he is. Uh the that it happened that white people left Kenya because there was some kind of like policy or intent to get the co white people out of Kenya, which is, I don't think that's what they were doing. I think they were just trying to achieve equality. And the result of equality was that a lot of people, white people left, not all of them. Um, so this whole idea, but the fact that she would say that was that like, you know, colonized people have a right to live free of their colonizers. There's a comment here in his chat that's uh, very accurate. She was not genocidal, but she was very hand wavy with the rhetoric that logically would lead to it. Yeah, basically. Well, the question mm -hmm. is, what happens when the colonizers don't want to leave? Uh, should they have the right to like, deport them? I think there was a one stage in that debate where she said um, she said that uh, she wouldn't mind, I think. And then, but that, that's, that's still not genocide, though. The situation is completely different from Germany, even in the 19th and early 20th century, really. So they aren't talking about a woke conspiracy by the elites to uh, feminize your children and to give them uh, illicit drugs and whatnot to, to, to weaken... To weaken the Western male to make him more easily controlled by the globalists? That's not a thing that's ubiquitous right now in right-wing discourse. That, by the way, like, even even the new Prime Minister um, of uh, the UK, who is a duplicitous piece of shit, by the way, um, his, his Wikipedia article even cites him talking about, uh, like, like, woke nonsense, as if it's like this hegemonic thing that's uh, pushing lies to, to the common folk. What she was advocating for was something that could result in a genocide. Or that the logical conclusion of it would be a genocide, but that's not like making her genocidal. Unless we're just doing like internet speech or whatever. Does genocide require death? Well, the answer is destroy. So yeah, I think it does. As far as I know. Like the, uh, like I guess the Armenian genocide, which is like you're going to walk you're going to you're going into exile and you're going to walk from here to here um but the distance was so far that you know like they couldn't fucking make it yeah, and then they died what about cultural well cultural genocide's not a legal term you can say it's a term and it's roughly defined which is the kind of term they use for the uyghurs but legally yeah i don't think the ua does the un is is cultural genocide like an international internationally illegal you know what the you know what the un does that's kind of interesting um it privileges state rights over things that are regarded as subsidiary to state rights, which means that if you can attain uh, a mechanical hegemony over a space, then it doesn't matter uh, what other groups within that space lay normative claim to it. You can appeal and be recognized as a, as a nation, as the representative of a nation at the United Nations against those people in your territory. As, as indeed is the case uh, for its founding uh, members. Um, like, like the, the, every, every, basically all of its members, in fact. All of them. Germany. The UK. United States.
it's it's not it's not the United Nations. It really should be called, and this would be confusing for obvious reasons, but it really is the United States. That is, it's a federation of state apparatuses, of, of state powers, as things that are fundamentally such because they are successful at keeping these massively diverse, disparate, and normatively um, uh, heterogeneous populations uh, under control as, as, as singular aggregates within borders. Um, the reference to legality here is meaningless. It's like saying, well, it's not a genocide because the Chinese state doesn't identify it as a genocide. Why on earth would you privilege the, um, the, the Federation's definitions over the definitions of any particular state? Like, did, did God come down and say this one's more true than that one? Remember, membership is still decided by the representatives of those states anyways. Not the representatives of those peoples, because they don't represent peoples, the representatives of those states. I, don't, I didn't know it was. I think it was devised as a subcategory, but I don't know if it was actually stuck. I think it's like- UN recognized the Uyghur genocide, did they? I actually can't remember. Let me double check. <clears throat> actually, this might be useful to look at. Um, this is apparently happening right now. Or this month, rather. Al Jazeera. <clears throat> Outrages UN debate on China's alleged uh, Xinjiang abuses rejected. China claims quote unquote victory as UN Human Rights Council votes not to discuss allegations of abuses against minority Uyghurs. The UN Human Rights Council has voted not to debate the treatment of the Uyghurs and other mostly Muslim minorities in China's northwestern region of Xinjiang, even after the UN's humans, uh, Human Rights Office concluded the scale of the alleged abuses there may amount to crimes against humanity. The motion for a debate on the issue was defeated by 19 votes to 17, with 11 countries abstaining in a decision China welcomed and others condemned as shameful. Many of those who voted no were Muslim-majority countries such as Indonesia, Somalia, Pakistan, UAE, and Qatar, the United Arab Emirates. Among the 11 countries that abstained uh, were India, Malaysia, and Ukraine. This is a victory for developing countries and a victory uh, for, I'm presuming, truth and justice, Hua Shunying, China's foreign affairs spokesperson, tweeted. Human rights must not be used as a pretext to make up lies and interfere in other countries' internal affairs or to contain, coerce, and humiliate others. The UN first revealed the existence of a network of detention centers in Xinjiang in 2018, saying at least one million Uyghurs and other ethnic minorities were being held in the system. China later admitted there were camps in the region, but said they were vocational skills training centers necessary to tackle quote-unquote extremism. Amid leaks of official government documents, investigations by human rights groups and academics, and testimony from Uyghurs themselves, China has lobbied hard to prevent any further probe into the situation in Xinjiang. Former UN Rights Commissioner Michelle Bachelet, who first called for unfettered quote-unquote access to the region in 2018, was only allowed to visit in May in what appears to be a tightly choreographed visit. Her report on the situation was also pushed back and was only released on August 31st, minutes before her term was due to end. While it did not mention the term genocide, it found that serious human rights violations had been committed, and said the extent of arbitrary and discriminatory detention of members of Uyghur and other predominantly Muslim groups may constitute international crimes, in particular crimes against humanity. The United States condemned the latest vote. Good. Um, the inaction shamefully suggests some countries are free from scrutiny and allowed to violate human rights with impunity. Michelle uh, Taylor, the U.S. representative to the Human Rights Council, said in a statement, No country represented here today has a perfect human rights record. No country, no matter how powerful, should be excluded from council discussions. This includes my country, the United States, and it includes the People's Republic of China. I like that. 
In the wake of the UN report, Uyghur groups had urged the UN Human Rights Council to establish a commission uh, of inquiry to independently examine the treatment of Uyghurs and other minorities in China, and called on the UN Office on Genocide Prevention to immediately conduct an assessment of the risks of atrocities, including genocide and crimes against humanity in Xinjiang. They expressed disappointment at Thursday's outcome with the campaign for Uyghurs, noting that Beijing had been actively trying to suppress the report at every level. So what it looks like is they're not even allowing a judgment to be made. So much for that. Like an academic concept, but... I don't think it's legal. I don't think you can convict someone of cultural genocide. What were you saying, partial pressure? Any of the following acts committed with intent? To... Okay, so I've seen this, right? Yeah, this is... Um... Let's just get the uh, genocide definition. Let's just go with this short one. Genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part. In part is a big thing as well. You don't have to try and kill the entire fucking group. Destroy. I, I, I looked at a paper on this once. It was really big, but I think like it has, I think it has to be killing, doesn't it? Under this definition. You know what's, you know what's really convenient about, about these, this terminology? Uh, a national, that's by reference to a European construct. Ethical, also by reference to a European construct. These are things that liberal states have uh, set definitions for that they can exclude you on the grounds of not meeting the criteria. Um, case in point, and I bring this up a lot, um, Canada has a big problem with uh, abuse of indigenous uh, land and indigenous treaties and um, indigenous culture generally. There was a development nearby where they bought up a whole bunch of uh, real estate um, and uh, demolished it in order to build a, a big resort uh, nearby. And uh, part of that process was demolishing a cave system that had been used as a, uh, a burial site by an indigenous group for hundreds and hundreds of years. And uh, part of the argumentation that went towards justifying the destruction against people who were uh, trying to defend it was that there were no permanent structures built on it. And so because the... Uh, what really was a, a very important religious site for an ethnic group that had, uh, frankly, every every right over it, over every other landowner here, um, just by dint of, of having, of, of being the, the first here, frankly, um, because it didn't approximate in form an external expression to a Christian-style church, it was uh, considered fit for demolition. It did not have to be protected by law. So. National, ethnic, racial, religious groups, such as killing members of the group, uh, causing serious bodily or mental harm, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction, in whole or in part, imposing measures intended to prevent births from within the group, forcibly transferring children. I think there also has to be... So very easily, now first of all, this is a terrible argument. Hey, uh, the, the words in this document don't include gender, so it's okay. Um, the uh, This actually encompasses what uh, people are proposing and what has actually been attempted in the United States with respect to trans people, specifically with respect to uh, B, C, and E. Um, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. They're talking about denying access to uh, medical care that has been established to be preventative of uh, extreme uh, mental harm, and um, in many cases uh, leading to suicide. Um, C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. If the group is a social entity, um, is an entity that does not have a basis, as, as you know, like a religious group or, or a national group may, does not have a basis in... Um, a, a specific genetic inheritance, the color of your skin, who you're related to, stuff like that, um, then removing the capacity of a community to recognize the existence of that group, especially uh, when we're talking about members of that group itself, we're talking about refusing education to uh, people who would understand themselves as trans if they knew what the hell trans meant. Um, that will have the result of bringing about the physical destruction, in whole or in part, uh, of that of that community. And E, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. What are you doing when you insist that we cannot talk about uh, trans people in schools when you have trans students? Well, you're insisting upon categorization schemes that only allow them to identify as, as 
uh, that which they are not. Um, or you're preemptively trying to make it so that they can never think of these categories in the first place. So that they can never become them. So you're, you're still cutting it dead, right? The absence of the word gender in this description is doing all of the legwork here. It's literally just that a federation of states, all taking part in genocides actively, by the way, um, doesn't recognize uh, gender as a group worth protecting, or trans people as a group worth protecting. Therefore, it's fine. This is just dumb. This is just really dumb. Be like a level of like state force as well. But this whole thing about some people have the intent and some lawmakers want it to be the case that uh, people like trans kids can't get access to healthcare. That's not genocidal, right? Are there any like, so one example you could give, I think the worst thing that could happen is uh, conversion therapy is banned in half of the states. And it doesn't happen that often in other ones. I think if there was some mass movement to like, con like to take kids away to conversion therapy places to like, yeah, you could call that like a crime against humanity and whatever the fuck else. But that might, I don't know if that would fall under cultural genocide, even though it'd be quite similar to- It literally wouldn't fall under cultural genocide because you don't identify uh, trans people as a culturally significant group. That's doing all of the work here. It's just contempt for the category. Which, frankly, loner box, you should know better. I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed here. Actually, very disappointed because you, you demonstrated that you can think critically this way with respect to other things. So, I'm going to try to be constructive because I think loner box has done a lot of good work and I think he's genuinely an intelligent and, and conscientious person. You flubbed this one really badly. This is, this is a basic failure of reasoning. Um, you should revisit this. To the activity like you probably would be okay just because but again you guys they call it desistance therapy now and it's all over the place uh tell that i'm actually not familiar with that term can you send me that please or send me like a source for that that would be uh, useful to look at they're confusing so much holy shit there are people who think there should be like try like matt walsh thinks that no one should be allowed to be trans right they should there's no no one should be allowed gender affirming care right but that doesn't mean there's a genocide happening or on its way that just means one person has some like dog shit fucking views on it and like yeah it means one person is dog shit fucking views on it and has power that's typically how genocides happen one person in power or a few people in power or people representing a movement in power have dog shit views on something it just so happens that some of those dog shit views have the consequence of depersoning a massive part of the population that's not a genocide, though. It doesn't even need to be massive. Like, a, a, a population can be small. Just because the, the group under... Tar the group targeted is small doesn't mean it's not genocide because you're trying to eliminate them. Like, you can find lots... You can, if you want to say you can find, like, intent and all that, then you go for it. But still, let's see. Uh, youth access to gender-affirming care. I, I want to find out, are there any states where gender-affirming care is illegal? Like, completely. Are there any states where you just can't be trans? Where you can't transition? I guess I don't know what your issue is. What we should call it? You can just call it trans erasure. That's because that's what it is. Arkansas. So if it's I just Uyghur erasure, guys. <laughs> Chill out. They're just they're just vocational training centers. Look at Arkansas. I'll be find the all trans affirmative care, not just for kids. Because I, I looked at this map of anti-trans laws. Arkansas cannot. Hey, Demon Mama. Uh, nice to see you, by the way. Stupid suggestion. Um, I know Doe wanted to see me cover. Do you want to come on and chat about this? No, no, no pressure. Just it just occurred to me off the top of my head. I wouldn't mind because you've already gone through this and reviewed it. So, like some push and pull, I feel like would be useful on my end. Plus, I think you just have a better knowledge base about this issue in particular. Your your call. Like just just get back to me if you would like to. It's just for. It also gives me an excuse to take a bathroom break. To be totally honest with you, so kids and they couldn't enforce it. This is okay. This is the right here. You've just demonstrated completely for me. I'll read it first, actually, and then I'll get mad, all right? Arkansas cannot enforce ban on gender affirming care for trans kids. Federal Appeals Court, this is August this year. Erasure does... Why? Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Erasure does... Yeah, I know. Trans erasure is a really bad thing. I don't know, yeah. That's why I think it's a better thing to call it than fucking genocidal. Okay, but here, here's the problem. The insistence that it's not genocidal has the implication, culturally, 
socially of it being not as bad as genocide. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Okay, I'm going to take five minutes to run to the washroom, and then we're going to have uh, Demon Mama on. Um, at some, I, I don't, I don't know if you're uh, ping me when you're done. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, I'll be right back, and then we'll bring on Demon Mama, and we'll uh, we'll chat about this. This truly is the weirdest timeline. I'll be right back, guys. And we're back from outer space. All right. Uh oh, Demon Mom, I'd like you in before. So you can uh you can warn me about what to expect. Also, I'm dying right now, so I need somebody else to do some of the talking. I'll give you a call now, okay? <clears throat> okay, so Demon Mama's just gonna get her camera up and uh, shoot an announcement to Discord. <sighs> uh, Demon Mama, I am technically uh, incompetent to an extraordinary degree, so I will try my best to get your video on my end, but um, we'll, we'll try. Uh, Lonerbox may be wrong, but he's not necessarily irredeemable. I don't think Lonerbox is irredeemable. I think Lonerbox is generally a very sincere person. I just think he's got a head full of steam here.
<sighs> awful. Just awful. I, uh, I don't know. To a certain extent, also, I think you are what you eat. I think when you are like embedded in certain communities where certain things are allowed to fly, you know, you tend to drift in that direction. PS is hyper boomer when it comes to technology. Yeah, but that's why, that's why you're here. It's for the, it's for the the Renaissance man, Captain Picard with his with his literal. Uh, photo album, but with space foil around the pictures uh, style. I agree to kill a sunset. I, I'm going to try to stay constructive here. It's tricky when you're coming off of someone like Bogardus, but I'm going to grab a quick bite to eat, and then I'll be right back. I'll be one sec. Just grabbing protein. Fading. <laughs> I'll be one moment, Demon Mama. Sorry. This is me being weak. All right. Hold on to your butts. <clears throat> Today the imp and the squid lock what organs do they have in common? I don't know. Let this be the day that Cthulhu and Satan draw souls together. Something. Hello. Oh, hello. How are you? Let me. Uh, uh, sorry, I had your. Uh, I actually had your video audio on, so it was echoing there for a second. No, it's all good. Let me uh, bring your volume up a little bit. Can you? Um, you seem to be a little bit quiet on my end. Are you able to boost your audio a tiny, tiny bit, or would that be? Well, absolutely. Video? Hold on one second. Uh, it might just be me. Uh, chat. Let me know if the audio is unbalanced at all. Um, Demon Mama's already intimidating enough as is. Be able to boost the audio here. You're sounding much better already. I don't know if you did anything. Oh, okay, okay. Is that is that better? That's that sounds fantastic. I and mean, it looks like the audio levels actually have to boost myself a little bit to match you. So that's perfect. Okay, um, perfect. All right. Let so, me. Uh, so, yeah. If if you need me to make any other changes, let me know. I have like a lot of options to change audio levels. So if it's not ideal for your end, you know, whatever. No, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna try and share the screen here. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, do you want me to have camera on or? Uh, that's not important to me, and and moreover, I okay. have a feeling I'm going to completely fail to figure out how to do that. Um, oh, don't worry about it then. So, uh, but I can, I can. Uh... Oh, hold on, I was looking at your uh, screen right now. I guess I can just. Uh... 
Oh yeah, you're gonna share it in Discord if you want. I can. Yeah. Share it. Perfect. All right, I'll hold in that. So you've only, you're only so far. Away. Oh, you're kind of you're kind of warbling out there a little bit. I think uh, there's a distance issue. Oh. Is yeah. that bad? It's it's better. You're cutting out a tiny bit. I'm trying to figure out. I think that it only started once I started streaming. I wonder if that's part of the uh, issue. Could be. Uh, God damn audio. Uh, let me see if there's a there's one thing I can do. Hold on, let me try this. You sound good now. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll hold solid. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, I don't know what was going on? <clears throat> Sorry, as as I you were saying. Think... Oh. Uh... Oh wait, I think I know what's happening. I think I'm getting an echo from there we go okay okay okay. now i got it that would make sense um i was i was getting an echo from uh from your screen share but okay worked out now gotcha so you've you've just you've actually been watching so far because i've been watching your uh going over this video this seems like a is this like a this is like a prior context i hadn't even seen this uh i i don't know so i i looked up the conversation between loner box and um poly people Poly people, yeah. And um, this is what came up. So it looks like there was like a, there was like a longer vod before, and this yeah, is what um, this is what precipitated that conversation. Okay, that makes sense to me. Uh, last night I reacted to the loner box poly people conversation. Just just the conversation that they had. Um, In I fact, very very quickly, of... very quickly. So I'm not sure yeah. of the original date of the conversation, but Lonerbox conveniently has his entire desktop on screen here, and it says this uh, stream took place on the 20th. So was that the yeah, date I of think the that's date? Accurate. Okay, then that that'd be it then. Um, yeah, I think so. It was like it was a couple of days ago, um, and then when I came back, because I, I haven't streamed in a couple of days, when I came back, uh, a bunch of people were like, "Hey, did you hear about this conversation that happened?" I was like, "Nah, what happened?" And people were like, "It got cringe," and I was like, "Really?" Like I, I was pretty surprised. Pretty surprised, honestly. Generally, I think quite, quite highly of a uh, loner box on a lot of topics. But uh, I don't want to spoil anything for the for the debate. If you're gonna watch it, oh, uh, it it's. Uh, well, I think uh, I think I was not impressed. I will say that I posted a video about it today. You may have seen. I don't know. Uh, if I, ha I haven't yet. Um, I only became aware uh, of this this morning or, or last night. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I'll. I'll <laughs> part of it was i i didn't know it had even happened i had seen like very like the the faintest wind of like people being like oh a conversation about trans genocide happened but i didn't even realize it was like loner box or anybody like that i knew and uh and i just kind of ignored it and then somebody brought it up to me when i came back to stream and a bunch of people were like yeah you should react to this you should react to this i ended up doing like a seven and a half hour stream yesterday because i spent the last two hours reacting to this fucking de trash fire of a debate uh, uh well what we've seen so far um is not is not filling me with confidence i have a i have a suspicion of how it's going to go um, yeah uh and what 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 i've what i so i've been watching along with this for a little bit now i've been yeah. watching the whole time but um and it seems like a lot of what he uh repeats in the debate is like present here but in like what i would consider to be like uh maybe maybe the appearance of better structure and also uh no like i don't know weird uh debate posturing is one of the most i, I don't know i don't want to color your your whole interpretation of the debate but uh I'm, I'm just gonna say like the arguments are more or less identical to what he's laying out here except presented worse in the debate and also with a layer of like cruel smug vindictiveness that i found truly distasteful and uh i don't know i'll I say was, i'll say disappointed I'll, I'll, I'll say this much um in terms of like his his the 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 critical lens that he brings to bear on this is extremely wanting um and he's extremely yeah. he's extremely dismissive on really uh spurious grounds I will say that I, I have a suspicion, judging from his manner here, that I think a part of what's going on, and I think what goes on a lot in these circles, probably more so this is the, the, the key element in Lonerbox's case, this issue is fucking terrifying to deal with on the spot, yeah. especially if you're like a cis guy, um, because like you're, you're in a position where when, when, you, when you screw up, 
unless you're willing to like completely uh like face yourself and and, and like course correct and just say like no it's completely wrong and it's da, 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 da. now we're going to deconstruct and go back up to where we should be um which is which can be really humiliating to have to do um you you uh you know you, you messing up on this puts you at at serious odds with a large part of your audience um and i think a lot of people get into this kind of like what what, what looks vindictive and to a certain extent it practically is um as a defense mechanism and that's yeah. sort of what I think is going on here. It doesn't absolve him, but it's like you characterize him differently. I think he's he's on the back foot and he's completely uh, lost on this issue because he's 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 having to resort to um, it's technically not a genocide because the UN, which is entirely comprised of genocidal members, doesn't register uh, gender groups as as a group um, that can oh, be I genocided mean, that against. An, that is an embarrassingly like lacking argument. It's yeah. it's. It's pathetic. Even if you go and if you go, he, th it's really funny because in my review of his debate, which was really off the cuff, I just brought up the exact page that he had, that he kept referencing the yeah. UN convention on genocide. Yeah. And even in there, they're very clear that like the, they, they're, they're, they take pains to say that like the genocide convention uses the most narrow definition, the most narrow popular definition yeah. of genocide. And even then, I believe that it's very easy to make a case for an ongoing active ongoing genocide in the United States based on the UN's uh 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 you know parameters but on top of that who the fuck cares about exactly. what the UN thinks a genocide yeah. is like when you're talking to a trans person who is making who is art who is addressing politics and again I'll try not to spoil anything for the conversation that you're about to react to because I think you're gonna uh, have an interesting time with it. I'll put it that way. Um, but uh, but like when you're talking to a trans person who's very well versed on these issues, and they're saying like, "I am signal, I am w ringing the warning bell of this being a genocide." Responding with like the UN definition of genocide is hilarious. And there's just a number of like, there were a number of factual claims about genocide, and unfortunately. Uh, a number of factual claims that were made about the Holocaust that, as this conversation goes on, uh, that I found severely lacking and uh, unbecoming of someone who generally who, who generally seems to pride themselves on their research. Uh, yeah, uh, I just, there's a, you made a good point. So, like, you made a really good point earlier, which I think, like, pretty roundly defeats uh, there's two two approaches you could say to like the whole like oh well gender is technically not in the definition well first of all the UN is using the, using the most narrow definition uh, because it's an it is a, a organization that is ostensibly tasked with you know p peacekeeping essentially between nations to prevent like all out war or to control it that's that's their claimed goal so yeah. obviously they're going to have to be more careful because they're having to talk about two countries that might be having an ethnic conflict and the goal of the UN is like i said ostensibly to calm those two people those two groups into not killing each other or to mitigate it in some way so obviously they're going to need to be very careful with their words but like uh uh it's like so that's the first part but secondly what you mentioned earlier in this conversation about saying that like the 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 liberals constantly change definitions about a group that you can be defined out of existence and like this is something that i've talked about a lot which is that like trans people as a demographic didn't exist like weren't identified popularly or by historians or anything at the time that they were being genocided actively in germany uh, trans people who were just sort of lumped together with homosexuals and transvestites at the time were did not exist as like a there wasn't a term for that. So like, well, more moreover, like, there was there was a broader term that included them and then eliminated them by by that inclusion. Yeah, exactly. So it's, inverts, it's like, yeah, yeah, precisely. Yeah. So like this this definitions game is is an inc it's a, it's a very in my opinion it's it's a very dirty tactic that is doesn't it, it doesn't even uphold like a, a progressive approach or worldview like you're not addressing the question of whether a genocide is happening or whether like by saying well technically this type of group isn't categorized it'd be like if like i don't know it'd be like if in the future 
there was like a like a like a secular organization like a bunch of secular organizations that weren't technically religions and one of them just decided to round up all of the other ones and mass kill them and then you're like well it's not a genocide because the jet the un definition says it's religious or ethnic and this is an association uh, of people that doesn't have any re religious connotations or ethnic connotations it's like yeah but they're a group of people who associate with each other in an in a in a absolutely parallel uh you know structure to a religion or an ethnic group or a race those terms are or, not or even like e even if i may quickly like e even leaving out aside structure because of course like yeah, like yeah. like gender identity is one that doesn't really have like a coherent structure we're talking about like a self description exactly. in the category of person it could just be like a certain level of of, of intensity of, of personal importance or things like that yeah, i want to make sure nobody doxes themselves okay sorry still with me yeah, I'm still here. Okay, brilliant. Sorry, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, no, no, I, I agree with you. Like, I think that like taking a a hyper rigid approach that like these four things mentioned in this is I don't know, I just think it's very lazy and intellectually dishonest and also uh, morally questionable uh, because I have to wonder what your goal in goal and intentions are. Uh, when you're like splitting hairs over the fact that like, well, technically gender isn't listed. And it's just like, who cares? I don't What's think the he, actual claim that I, I want to say that I don't think he realizes that's the move he's making. And I think he's under pressure. If, if, yeah. I think I think it will prove his character after this will be how he addresses criticism. And I want to maintain because again, he has a good history. I have a lot of regard <laughs> for him. I want to see how he deals with that going forward. I've been disappointed <laughs> in the past by other people before. <laughs> um yeah we're gonna I think, see about that oh god i think even as a, oh is, is it that bad you're building this up like like you want to keep me like virginal like it's, just build, first, it's my I, first playthrough of ocarina of time you don't want to spoil it um <laughs> i don't i don't want to spoil i don't want to make it seem like it's like the worst thing i've ever seen because i'm not like i'm not trying to make him out to be bad it's just the debate was terrible like i i was very i was my end re re review of the debate was quite harsh and like and I, I've been thinking about it since I watched it last night. I premiered my reaction to it this morning on YouTube. Um, and I've now, like, uh, like I've rewatched and went back and rewatched portions of it and thought about my reaction. And I'm like, I've only grown stronger in my denouncement of how it was handled. So I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it was a real drop ball. And, uh, how long is the know. debate I itself? Don't, I don't. The debate itself is uh, it's about forty five minutes or so. Let's just... So it's not a super long debate. It starts once you'll see poly people come on and uh, and I think it's a uh, you were just yeah there there. Why, why don't we just jump to people. that and and let's just go over? Yeah it. sure. Uh, you don't hey, you don't, don't do... feel like you need to stick around for however long. Um, I appreciate you coming on. Oh no no no! I'll stick around for what I'm not doing anything else right now. Just I've just been, one uh... one final note on what you were saying though about like who who cares yeah. if the UN defines it this way? I think even from like a liberal perspective, it's like this isn't like an ethical determination by a state. This is this is a treaty. This is this is the product of a treaty organization between states. This has no this has no normative force outside of how these states act with respect to their role in that federation this is this kind of right there was a lot of fixation even in what you've been watching on like whether you can legally call something a a genocide or whatever but i don't care about that even a little bit and i don't think you should unless you're like a lawyer and like the reason why i say that is because uh out of curiosity i'm not trying to get a gotcha on you but yeah. uh, maybe a, a a meta gotcha on learner box here but do you sure. know when the term genocide was coined Oh, I did actually. I did, and I looked it up on stream. <laughs> I I've completely lost it. Nineteen forty-four. Thank you. So, the word did not even exist to name the phenomena that was exactly going yeah, yeah. That already right. happened four years. You know, at yeah. by Loner Box's own timeline, he believe he says that the genocide began in nineteen forty-one. I disagree with that. I I explain that in my video why I disagree with that that phrasing and that. But whatever, it doesn't matter. I don't care here. What I'm going to say is let's take him at his word. Let's say it's 1941. Well, the word had not even been coined to describe what was happening in 1941. And by this argument, if we're only saying that a legal definition is what mattered, that you can legally call something that, well, you wouldn't have been able to legally call the Holocaust at the time. Yeah, they, they previously, and I, and the, the, the papers around that or, or like the speeches or whatever referencing stuff of this nature 
characterized like this this crime has no name or something like that like they were they were very explicit about that like this is this is a new yeah exactly it's it's a it's a it's it's like okay like splitting again splitting hairs over the definition when it's very clear what's being what is being explained and what and 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 again i i would argue my core argument is that the argument has failed because even what is going on in the u.s does meet the u.n definition but we all know that the UN is never going to declare, no matter, it could get so bad here, the UN would never declare a genocide in the United States, obviously. Well, we were just looking like, at, uh, we were just looking at the Al Jazeera article going over the fact that the UN will not even have the debate on, on whether Yeah, they won't have on. the debate yeah. about, about Xinjiang, which is like, which is like the Uyghur genocide is, it's one of those things where, uh. It, it, it's 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 it? a, it's a conveniently ethnic group, like it's something and, and religious group. Like you can identify it in the terms that the UN already admits. Like it's simpler. Yeah, and 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 you look at what happened, and it's like, uh, it's like a bunch of a bunch of people are be are being rounded up and culturally re-educated. They are being forcibly in in detained, and it's like, and then when people go to look at it, there is a, a an extremely limited tour. That is very obviously uh, putting forward a, a specific message of uh, incredibly sus, like almost like yeah. North Korea esque level of like, yeah, walk into this hall that we just painted, walk into this this room where everybody's having a fun time doing dance lessons because it's a paradise in here. But then you walk out and you're like, this is a prison structure. And then you're you like, people want me to say like, oh, don't denounce that, don't don't act as though there's a genocide because you can't you can't legally prove it by the un's definition and i'm like well first of all you can and second of all okay if you really want to say that that's that like you can't definite what is going on here million well, a million people have been in have been yeah. literally put into a prison slash re, re education program are you telling me that's like are you telling me that's like a okay thing you're telling me that doesn't meet the definition of everything that we're talking about when we invoke the word genocide well i think you've put your finger on on the issue here so i think what he, what's going through his head is he's going like, hey, okay, guys, like this, we're being hyperbolic, and we're not able to talk seriously about this if this isn't actually meeting the threshold for what a genocide, what's sort of entailed by the term genocide, as it's sort of technically understood by certain agents. Let's just run with that as like a really charitable interpretation. The problem, though, is that once you have the question put to you, once someone has said like, there's a genocide going on in Xinjiang, uh, or let's like use the use uh, more poetic, I guess is, is the word, but like there's that book, The Rape of Nanking. Let's talk about like the rape of Xinjiang, right? Somebody characterizes it that way. Somebody then comes in and says, well, hang on, slow down, guys. Xinjiang isn't literally being raped. That's not simply a, a, a neutral statement that has no effects by itself. The implication, the, 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 the direct result of saying this is to uh, say by the standard of the thing that we must act upon, this does not meet the threshold. This is less bad. And the only thing that remains from that judgment is, this is less bad. This is less bad than it is being talked about. Therefore, the response to it becomes apathetic. So what he's actually doing by insisting that it's not a genocide, he's not just making a technical distinction that's that's both meaningless and probably wrong anyways. Um, he's also making the opposite statement, that what's happening isn't as bad. And unfortunately, that's the case even if he then follows with, it's still bad. Because yeah, the word genocide is a specific cultural impact that he is trying to take away from it, which at this point, like, even if he was right about the technicality of it, don't like at, at a certain yeah, point, I don't like, think it yeah. does anything. I don't think that it, uh, if you think that, like, I feel like if you really, if it's really, if the, the term bothers you that much, if the term really bothers you that much, then, uh, then I would rec then I would say then I would just simply say something like, well, I don't really I don't know about that term, but what I can say is that there is a bunch of this horrible stuff going on and not uh, launch yeah. into an attempt to dis to prove how wrong everyone is who's exactly. saying that it's a genocide. Like, evade it. Like, just evade it. Yeah. Again, I I want the motives don't make sense to me. And I'm not saying that like I think Loner Box is like some Nazi or something, because I yeah. don't. I, I genuinely don't think that. Uh, I do think, though, that like hyper legal, obsessed liberalism tends towards uh, intentionally or unintentionally downplaying these horrific things by by the way that it responds, and that like this is hijacked. That like, I mean, uh, I was uh, I was talking with one of my partners earlier, 
and they brought up a quote by the Nazi jurist Carl Schmidt, who who in a letter was talking about how the the greatest thing that you know about about or or, or the re part of the reason why fascism had such an upper hand on liberalism is because you can play so far within the technicalities of the rule that like of of the rule of law yeah. that it, it's it's too late by the time that anybody can even actually mount a defense because you could say all kinds of plausible deniabilities. Oh, I'm not, it's not genocidal intent. I didn't intend to genocide anybody, which changes the legal definition that there's such an obsession with the, with the precedent, which things that have existed before that you can do new things and call them different things and get away with them, even though they take the shape of things that would otherwise be opposed by liberals. And I think that's something that's going on here is that like, the conversation itself is slanted in the direction of downplaying what's going on. And uh, again, like as a matter of, of fact, by, by the way, what's happening in, you can, yeah. you can, you can take that judgment to the bank. Cause at the time Carl Schmidt said that he wasn't a Nazi. He was a, a Catholic jurist working for, or advising Hindenburg um, because yeah. Hindenburg was considering uh, giving the chancellorship or, or, or allowing uh, the Nazis to, to basically become a part of, a uh, conservative coalition and eventually just made Hitler the chancellor. Um, this, 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 what he, he, he became a, a Nazi, uh, uh, opportunistically to, to maintain his yeah. career. So he's, he's still in hell, thank God. But, um, yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, say hi to him for me. Uh, let's, uh, let's, oh. let's, let's just, we, we have a, you know, here in here at this corner of hell is where the cool people go. We, we, we have a dark, cold corner. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's, Let's let's witness the yes, uh, the travesty. Out on a on a uh, on an ex it ex okay we caught our mid vowel there that's not great let's go back a little bit like yeah people should take up arms that's fucking cool and they should not only that they don't stop there they should learn how to use those fucking weapons as well right if I lived in America as someone who's like the most I've got is like a Middle Eastern name yeah I take up arms in that country Jesus I just don't think you lose any sense of urgency or alarmism by calling it like trans erasure or systemic like abuse of trans people like all that is real and that's all happening and the republicans are trying to go quite far with it but when you say that we're on the precipice of a trans genocide i'm just like mate forced conversion okay do you see how you've like you've the taken what i said and said they're doing i said audio bad no 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 i can't oh can you not hear it no i can only oh it's weird it seems like discord might be pulling the audio from a different input because when I talk, when your when your screen share is un unmuted, I can only hear myself and I can't hear the video. So I think it's a. If you look at your Discord audio settings, yeah, let me see where let me take Discord's a look. pulling audio from, <sighs> or your screen share is pulling audio from. Um, Sorry, I know stream audio is fucking nightmarish. I use like a, I that, use a virtual. Is that just uh, an advanced or? I think. Hold on. Voice let me and see. video. Should be user settings, voice and video, and then, oh, um, let me see, maybe if I share my screen, I can find out. And then if you go here, oh, I have no idea. I don't actually know how to, how to fix that. Okay, I'm sorry. I wish I could help you, but I don't actually know why it would pull from that. Uh, uh, I, I, I I've, mean, I've, hold I've, on. I can just sync it up. I can just sync the video up. Don't worry about it. What, okay. What's your timestamp? Uh, 3647. Hold on. Let me get to that. I'll sync it up and then I'll All right. pause right. and watch along with you. Okay. I, I, am hearing, I am hearing, I am hearing, a, hearing a, an echo on my, end. on my end. Oh, that's because of this. There you go. Okay. There we go. All right. Yeah. All right. See, it did the it did the same thing. It did the same thing for you too. That's so weird. Apparently, Discord does not play well with like uh, audio routing. So this is Zara, Zarex. I'll just send you a link. Okay. Oh yeah, if you got the time link to the timestamp, that'd be sick. All the time in the world. Sorry, viewers, for the leftist audio. I come in here and fuck up everything immediately. So you know right, so Here we go. We got this, and we got thirty six forty seven. Perfect. All right. Just tell me when you're going to hit play and then I'll uh, play along with you. Three, two, one, go. State agents sending to like people pe being sent to people's doors 
and trying to fucking drag them <laughs> into like conversion therapy comes and you said they're doing that right now and now it's oh indirectly forced conversion but it's essentially happening right now by detransitioning kids and through the reversal of civil rights of trans people in the u.s okay like we can just fast forward to the bit where um <laughs> i don't know no i'm sorry i'm being too triggered i'm i'm, I'm judging too quickly what's the debate tonight yeah, i don't see, know i, I was laughing part, at dj so. mule mm -hmm. for saying that there's a ongoing that there's like a fucking um it will be too late if you what are you talking what are you saying what do you think I'm suggesting? I don't know at what point you came in. Do you want to do you want to talk if you're if you're a streamer? I feel like I recognize you. I just have no idea where, so I'll just go blank slate. You know? Yeah, I can give you my Discord if you want to. There's an open offer because I have no I have no idea where you joined or what we're talking about or what people have told you. But fuck me. Out on a on a uh, on an ex an exciting moment here in the oh. Polyvival broadcast. They're in the waiting room. I'm glad. Fuck! I fucked up. Hello. Like I said, how many states until it's considered to be a genocide? Like, like, uh, is there a... Hey, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, hey. So what's <laughs> up? Hi, my name is Polly. It's nice to speak to you. Nice to speak. Um, so, yeah, I, I haven't seen that much. People just came into my... I just went on stream and people were like, Lonerbox is saying there's not a trans genocide. So I popped in and I got to the part where... Let's see, I came in at the part where you where you said essentially that... Uh, let's see, I reacted to... I think it was where you said... It was, the, it was just before where you said, it'll be a genocide when armed state agents come and try to drag trans kids away and i and i was thinking well hold on a second like that's kind of an arbitrary way to define a genocide like is is <laughs> what they're really doing in texas what's that i said that is a really arbitrary way to define the genocide yeah yeah it is uh 38 44 42 or you can see i guess yeah i can see it i'll i'll, I'll keep it uh actually you know what if i put a um closed captions aha uh -huh. oh, that's perfect yeah 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 Oh wait, that's great. That's like that's like perfect. We yeah. beat it with science. Okay. Where where they are essentially saying if you if you are a gender affirming parent, we will take your kids away from you. If you are a gender denying parent, if you gaslight your kid to go back in the closet, then that's good parenting. Like, how different is that from state agents, armed state agents, like t transing people, or or like rounding up trans people? Like that's that seems to be a distinction without a difference at that point. Okay, so when I talk about genocide, I don't think I'm using an arbitrary definition. I think uh, we were just going through international uh, definitions and also just the way that it's the... I can't help but... I mean, he understands, like, the, the process by which these definitions are encoded in law is literally arbitration, right? Yeah. It's what the I, word I law so. means. <laughs> yeah legal precedent like, set for yeah. in the past oh sorry and it seems to i didn't be. mean to cut you off there they're, they're, they're definitionally arbitrary <laughs> yeah like that's the, the the point is that you have to pick like where the line is but like also i don't know i find it kind of strange to waffle between i'm gonna be really stringent about the un definition of genocide when it's convenient for me or when i when i want to sound like i'm invoking something important but then I'm going to say, like, oh, well, people aren't being dragged out of their houses, even though be people being dragged out of their houses is not the UN definition of genocide. I just I find that a weird thing. Yeah, I, I find feel that a weird, like, pivot. I, I feel like I feel like, well, they're allowed to be genocided from home is not really the, uh, the ameliorating factor he thinks it is to be the case yeah, that I when agree. people are convicted for the crime of genocide um the bar is incredibly high like ev even really horrible things like like say like the holodomor is it's contested whether or not that's a genocide because there's um the sign of whether or not it was intentionally targeted at one particular group you know like people in russia were starving people in kazakhstan were starving. well again like just sorry to stop this again but like on the subject no, of what, what are the states of not calling it a genocide it's the issue that too many things are being called genocides and too many people are being punished like maybe maybe being a little bit more uh you know strident and loose with the term genocide is probably a good thing at this juncture since it seems like obvious cases are falling through the cracks as it is it seems like basically no one is able to ever call anything a genocide by un legal terms and it feels almost as if that's not to sound like a, a conspiracy theorist but it almost sounds like that's in the interest of all of the states who are involved who regularly engage in uh destruction of their uh of their opponents by all means by all kinds of means i i just i find that 
I find this an insufficient approach. I, 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 again, I contest the factual claim of the UN like definition not being fit, not fitting here. But I also contest the like moral value of being stringent to the UN guidelines. I'm gonna be one second, then I'll be right back. Sure. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess I could like uh I guess I could like just chat. You know, I don't wanna I don't wanna be like a stream taker over, but I guess I can. You know? I guess I can. I can I can sit here and I can I can talk to the, the Sundites. I mean, wait a minute, you guys are are you guys still in the, the President Voshite like thing where you were stealing Vosh's identity because he got banned? Is that still going on? Time to go imp mode. You should go. I mean, go, I, I'm never going to. I have a bias. I'm always going to say go imp mode, obviously. Can someone correct me if I'm wrong on my memory or understanding of the criteria for genocide? Oh, you can search it. There's a page, uh, the UN definition of genocide. They have a, a like a, there's a, it's like, hold on. I think it's literally called like UN dot, uh, UN genocide definition is literally un.org forward slash en forward slash genocide prevention like okay so here let me drop it in the chat sorry i was watching your chat and talking with your uh sundites oh sedition uh, um Bosch well, isn't banned you were just talking to him oh true sorry exactly he's not doing me so good these days exactly and he's he's, yeah. he's and he's me because he's he's off uh, youtube he's now, you, so I, i've right. assumed the mantle um it's it's, imp it's impressive where is, hold on, let me see. We have to be at uh, Kazakhstan. Okay, so hold on, 49. Okay, I see, I see where we are. All right, we got it. All right. So, and there's like, so you get into like a really murky territory. And if you look at the uh, cases of the Srebrenica massacre in Bosnia, the way that was determined to be a genocide, there's all kinds of like thresholds that had to be met. They had to show like, some of the evidence included they were bringing uh grave digging machinery they were bringing like machinery for digging holes and the generals couldn't explain why they brought it there they have quotes of people talking about we take revenge on the people who stole our land and all that stuff so i think when you use the term genocide i don't really know exactly i, th I think if we're just going pure descriptivism uh, i don't think it's enough at all i think if we're talking about rhetorically um I think there are sometimes people have used the word genocide to be rhetorically effective. I think that's under so, certain cases. I think when it comes to the case of trans issues in America, um, I I just don't know. So if the state I, is trying to, uh, uh, um, if the state does two things with state power directly naming, saying uh, trans kids must be taken away from their parents, plus we're going to now, now, introduce laws to eliminate people's ability to get insurance for transition related care and then you know move up from there to make it functionally more difficult to exist as a trans person like mm -hmm. like it's um you know what we're actually looking at this completely ass backwards um imagine if for argument's sake uh midway through the holocaust hitler somehow uh won the war and just germany sort of stabilized right um and, and at some point, there was a movement among the German population uh, to put a halt on certain um, genocidal practices against uh, Jews and gay people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that uh, they, they, weren't, they weren't being sent off to gas chambers anymore, but everything else was still there. Yeah. It would be sort of less genocidal, but it would, it would still be genocidal. Like I don't. The, it would still it's be not... genocidal, and it still would have followed on the on the ch on the tails of something worse. Which exactly. like, it's not it's not a yeah. it's not a threshold it's not a threshold condition of, of it being a genocide that the the sign on the camp is written in German, um, and so similarly though like like with this it's like, uh, are we gonna go? He he mentioned earlier we're we gonna go back to like 2014 levels as if 2014 is so far away and so unthinkable, um, 
it's like, well, well, hang on. How far away from 2014 levels have we actually gone? Because detransition camps were a thing. And they were a thing for trans people. It's just they weren't even identified as being trans. Yeah, well, I mean, and I bring this up in 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 my in my part of this. I go on, I go in a in a sort of a tangent where I talk about like the current state of trans law. Like, yeah. conversion therapy is still legal in a lot of places uh, in the United States, uh, and uh, conversion therapy, even where it's technically illegal, uh, goes on regardless. A lot of churches uh, still run these things under yeah. the guise of other names. It's incredibly common. We have two states currently that have attempted to pass total bans, and I don't mean uh, and I don't I don't mean just on minors getting access to HRT, but total bans getting uh, uh, you know, from adults as well, um, getting HRT. And uh, like you said, you know, what was it like in 2014? Well, I mean, I was trans in 2014, and I remember what it was like, and I remember how most co most insurance coverage in the United States had. Uh, essentially no functional coverage for trans people. I also remember what it was like uh, being uh, transitioning right on the cuff of the advent of Obamacare, what, previous to which being trans was considered a pre-existing condition, which would not just rule you out of getting coverage for being trans, but out of getting healthcare coverage in the United States altogether. Because if it got on your record that you were trans, a lot of people don't even know this, but uh uh when i uh when when i first started transitioning um the it was a, it was sort of like a a known thing that you wanted to find a doctor who would not who would uh who would acknowledge that you were trans but not diagnose you on paper as trans so what like trans friendly doctors would do at the time is that they would prescribe hormones under uh acne or uh, unwanted body hair or uh, et cetera, various things like that. And that's where the hormones would be prescribed under because getting uh, a, a, it was at the time called gender identity disorder, GID, getting a GID diagnosis was largely considered to be a black mark that would ruin your life. And that changed with Obamacare. Obamacare uh, outlawed, uh, you know, prevent uh, denying coverage based on pre existing conditions. People forget that it was literally like 2010 2011 was when that was when that change went into place uh that prior to that it was just it was just a part of 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 everyday life in America that tr if you were if it was if you were outed as trans to the medical institution you could lose healthcare for the rest of your life for everything for cancer for heart heart attacks, you would just have to p spend the rest of your life trying to pay out of pocket for those things because you had a pre-existing condition that would uh, deny you healthcare coverage in a lot of cases. And uh, like you were saying about like, oh well, like what if we walk back from the line? Like what if yeah. what if Hitler is is victorious and then just oh yeah, well you know we don't need to have the death camps anymore because there's only ten Jews left. You know what I mean? Like like. We live in that. Well, not, not even that. We like, let, let's 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 say like there there are millions of Jews left. However, yeah, um, they're they're still they're still unpersoned politically and all that stuff. It's just a few bad things are being rolled back. Like like, um, some of these 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 uh, negative things by exclusion that you just described, and some of the positive things. Um, like for example, somebody in my chat just brought up by this logic: every uh, cultural or every minority is being genocide. Well, no, because not every uh, minority was historically. Uh, put into institutions and sterilized forcibly. Um, right. So, like, which another yeah. thing I brought up that uh, that falls along this line, though it's a little bit of a different direction, is yeah. the fact that in the United States right now there are still a number of states that, uh, as a requirement to change your name legally, which is uh, a very important step of being able to exist safely as a trans person. Um, having an ID that is out of step with your current uh, uh, gender presentation is one of the most stressful things. If you talk to any trans person, most people have had some experience with it of uh, not having an updated ID. Every single time you go to the store, you are outed as trans. Every single time you go to the doctor, you are outed as trans. And a lot of states still have uh, surgical or medical requirements explicitly 
yeah. required for you to get a name change or you to get a gender change. That are sterilizing. Um, and sterilizing. Unironically, yeah. uh, the state that I had my name changed in, I got through on a literal technicality. They have since, thankfully, reformed the law. But at the time that I was originally trying to get my name changed, um, you had to, you were, you needed to pro have proof that you had had a gender firming surgery, which at that time was defined only as bottom surgery. So functionally, yeah, well, exactly. in order to change your name, you had to be sterilized. Well, because it's and all, like, it's all historically downstream from treating trans people as inverts. It's like, yeah, sure. We'll, we'll treat them. We'll let them back out into society, but we won't let them replicate themselves. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Shall we continue? Yeah, go ahead. Surely you could at least infer that the intent is there, right? Oh, yeah, intent's there. Yeah, lots of people have, like, what I would call... Genocidal if intent. If it's not genocidal... Yeah, lots of people have intent, but then you need the thing to actually... So I think as yeah, far as I remember I this. Texas, um, this stuff changes a lot. So you're as not willing know, to call it a genocide the, until the genocide happens, until people start what? What? Like, when is it going to be an actual genocide where it's, you know, you're cool with calling it a genocide? How many, I mean, this how many people have to be... any, This is the way this is the case with any genocide, right? Like, you don't call it a genocide until it's actually happened, right? Is it the camps? Like, like when is it going to be enough to, to say it's... I mean, like, like, it seems to me that you're... You're giving too much room to say uh, uh, that what's going on right now is not the beginnings of a genocide, right? You're saying there's not enough genocidal activity going on yet for me to be comfortable saying it's a genocide. But, like, like would the Nuremberg laws have been enough, even though, you know, maybe there wasn't enough, uh, uh, like, you know, relocation of Jews in Germany? Like... Like the beginnings of a genocide, of course, is going to be people that deny it's going on. But I don't want you to be one of them is what I'm saying. I guess that's my point. OK. Yeah. So first of all, of course, you have to. Of course, a thing has to happen before it's a genocide. OK. Like, yeah. Otherwise well, well, no, because the, the UN definition even allows for people to be destroyed in part, which means that it can be a genocide in the attempt. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think right here I have I've been keeping the UN genocide definition open uh but even here uh which is it so if you look in the the un.org forward slash en forward slash genocide prevention uh elements of the crime the popular understanding of what constitutes genocide tends to be broader than the content of the norm under international law article 2 of the genocide convention contains a narrow definition of the crime of genocide which can, which includes two main elements element 1 a mental element the intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group as such, and two, the physical element, which is the five elements that most people are more familiar with, you know, killing, serious yeah. bodily, mentally harm, the ones you went over earlier. But it's really interesting and conspicuous that right here in the beginning of the conversation, um, he, he acknowledges, and by the way, uh, spoiler alert, he will go back on his acknowledgement of the intent uh, which was a little bit odd, and I found that, again, weird. But uh, but he ignores the fact that in the definition he's been pulling from this entire time, the first part, part one, is a mental element in which there is the intent. And the intent is the by far the easiest part to display in all of this. Like you, I not, only that, cite, not only that, but like... I could cite for hours. Yeah, but, but I mean, the, the purpose of this document is to create like airtight um, conditions for intervention. So if the exactly. thing's already happened, then the document is useless because you can literally do nothing except slap world leaders on the wrist. You have no power to actually punish otherwise. Uh, once the so thing they've done is done, like yeah, this the whole the whole reason that this 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 genocide convention was drawn out was so that we could stop it from happening. Like the so Holocaust wasn't finished. He didn't get them all. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Otherwise, it's not a genocide. Otherwise, you can call it like a build-up. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna start taking notes because there was quite a lot in there. So can you idea. just go back to the second last thing you said? I can't remember. Fuck. Uh, well, I was trying to analogize to like so so you know, I don't know you know the exact details of how the uh uh 
uh, what happened on or about the time oh, sorry, like the sorry, Nuremberg sorry, sorry. Laws. I remember it. I remember it. Yeah. I remember it. Oh, yeah, I remember it. So uh, with that definition of them trying to, I guess, to erase the identity, which I absolutely think they're trying to do. If you want to call it like, trans erasure, and by the way, I think trans erasure is incredibly fucking alarming. And that, you know, that's what, yeah. Um, and I think especially with America and all the Tennessee laws and all that, like I don't, I'm not, I don't, the first thing I want to get out of the way, if we're arguing over terminology with genocide, I don't think that makes me any less alarmed than anyone else, okay? This is about terminology. When it comes to calling it a genocide, I think with your definition then, you could call so many things a genocide. You could call the treatment of British Muslims a genocide, right? Or at least the early stages of a genocide because they do things like, um, they try to do like secularization. Like if you want to be a British citizen, you have to like demonstrate things like you have to swear allegiance to the queen and do all- I mean, that's different though, because we're talking, I mean, first of all, if these were uh, previous denizens who didn't, who already had citizenship, then making a condition of their citizenship that they make themselves uh, apostates to their understanding of Islam w would be genocide under that definition. But moreover, um, we're talking about immigrants in this case so that that's that's a key distinction here obviously we're not talking about taking a portion of your population and unpersonal yeah these them. are people who are like i mean these are conditions all of else be equal like yeah. you are you are quote unquote i'm not saying that all immigrants choose but you are ideally the state of an immigrant is somebody who's choosing to come to the country and like that's as abhorrent as certain uh citizenship practices are it is a different context than like what you're saying, which is like a pre-existing population within the country that's now being legislated in a certain way. But on that note, if you have a bunch of refugees who are ask who are vying for citizenship, um, I think setting that as a condition is definitely being party to it. I mean, it, it's oh, I agree. I, th this is why I disagree with the idea that like intent is is one way in which you can identify something an action as genocidal. But it's not, you don't need the intent necessarily. Like genocide can happen just from sheer indifference. That happens a lot here in Canada. We have a whole lot of um, like cultural sites and groups that are just broken up because they just aren't even recognized. Um, they Wait, you're Canadian? My apologies. I didn't know you were Canadian. Really? I unironically didn't know that. Oh. What, what, what did you think I was, set of curiosity? I just thought you were, I thought you were American. Oh, thank God. I was just worried you were going to say English. All right. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, of course not. I mean, you don't have, you don't have the bongoid accent. Uh, so... But uh, no, I just, I didn't know you were Canadian. That's that's interesting. Uh, it's God, really not. there are so many Canadian streamers. What is it with Canada and producing producing streamers? Um, well, we we produce most of the right wing streamers too. I think. Yeah, that's true. Uh, or at least the successful ones. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Oh, wait. Because wait, Stephen Stephen Crowder's American, right? No, Stephen Crowder's. Or is American. he Canadian too? Jordan, Jordan Peterson's Canadian. Um, Ooh, yeah, that's right. You got Jordan Peterson. You got. Uh, uh, Southern. Uh, Southern, got, right? Uh, oh, you. The Proud Boys was McInnes, who's uh, who's Canadian. Wait, really? Uh, yeah, right. Isn't I thought, I thought, I thought he was. Canadian? Wasn't he like? Isn't he like Scottish or something? I don't think he's. I don't think so. I mean, his name is, but like, yeah, Gavin McInnes is a is a Canadian writer, podcaster, and far right polit political comment commentator. You um, Canada keeps creating the the people who fuck up our country the most. What the hell? Uh, Damn it! Everybody involved with Rebel Media. That's that's Canadian. Yeah, this is what we call blowback. You know, America uh, refines the worst forms of 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 conservatism, exports it to the world, and then the Canadians get back at us by by refining into the the most toxic right wingers you can imagine. God damn it! Yeah, Canada. Stephen Crowder is, uh... is Canadian. Oh my god. What? what, what no. Hold on. You're shitting me. American Canadian conservative political commentator. Which one was he first? Hold on, let's find out. He has dual citizenship, apparently? Hold on, let's see. I don't think he's ethnically Canadian. He was born in Detroit... His mother is French Canadian, and his fa then his family moved to Montreal, where he lived the rest of his childhood. So he's culturally Canadian. He, so we still produced him. At eighteen, he returned back to the United States. So he's been in the U.S. for a long time, but and he was born in the United States. But when he was like three, from three to eighteen, he lived in Canada. He Look, lived in Quebec. You don't know what it's like here, okay? There's a reason why people here turn into Nazis. Canadians are awful. Let's keep going.
all these things that might be like against like uh, so, your faith or they take they like they'll actually they take the only Canadians that aren't awful aren't really Canadians they've been duped kids for having like Arabic writing on their t-shirts because they think that uh, because a teacher thought it looked like a terrorist symbol right so they will do lots of crazy shit but again like we don't call it a genocide yeah. and we don't really need to to fight it you know? well well so so I'm not going to address exactly that 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 point because I don't know enough about it but let me tell you this the reason why we say that transphobes uh, uh, assert that we don't exist is because they 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 attempt to erase who we are you, you know uh, uh, who who we are like as people and and say you you know um, they, uh, and and to just claim that we are at at best they'll claim we're something we're not at worst they will just you know make it Someone in chat just said that Ted Cruz was born in Calgary. It's so that life is unlivable for us. And and uh, so so I think denying somebody's religion is uh, uh, you could. I don't know if you need to, but you could certainly distinguish denying somebody their right to free expression of religion oh to God. denying somebody it's their true, right to is. exist. What's that? He is. Ted, oh, Ted Cruz, Cruz is Canadian. He's also Canadian. No. Hey, wait a minute. He can't become a president, though, right? Not that he ever oh. had a chance. But you have to be born in America, don't wait. you? Wait. No, you don't. You just have to be. Uh, oh no! Actually, no. I think I think it's you have to be born an American citizen. I think. I think you have to be born an American citizen, or oh, hold on. Let's see. Rules for the presidency. This is a total dis dis distraction, but it's okay. So well, fine. hey, but wait, you became president and you're Canadian. Uh, yeah, but in a Schmidtian sense, right? This, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a president, um, by a commissarial, uh, modes of legitimacy. Yeah, true. Uh, presidential requirements, let's see. Let's find out. Oh, God damn it! This is not helpful. Qualifications for the president. Okay. Natural born citizen or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption of the Constitution. So weird. So, but so if he was, but he, he was, was he born in, in Canada to American parents? That must be what happened. That must otherwise, be what why would well, I think it's have to be born as an American citizen. I have to be born in America. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I mean, like, if you were born in, like on a military base or something, obviously you would 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 include would be included. Let's see though. Let's see if we can. This is a total distraction and doesn't really matter. But I just thought I think it's funny that like there are so many goddamn Canadian conservatives in America doing the conservative grift in America. So Connor in chat says you need to be born to an American citizen or born on American soil. Oh, okay, that makes so like sense. so an illegal immigrant who was. The, the child of an illegal immigrant um, could technically uh, have, have the same rights as, like, a Donald Trump. All right, that makes sense, then. Yeah. Such that their mental health will certainly be, uh, uh, or life will essentially be unlivable by design. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and I guess you can, but you can say that with, that's what happens with, say, like the cultural genocide that's happening in China is they're taking Muslims and taking them into re-education centers and sending them okay. out as non-Muslims. Like they dress like, you know, they dress, they don't wear their veils anymore and things like that. And they have, di they cook different food. Like, okay. but again, that's like well, that's state not, agents taking that's them into bad. camps and enforcing it. That's, so that's why that's a cultural genocide. Um, you, yeah, again, like transphobes assert that trans people don't exist. Again, like, so does, I mean, does that mean that I guess up until... I think the difference there is that when we're talking about genocide against trans people, we're not just talking about a group identity. We're talking about something that specifically is related to the well-being of individuals. Yeah, so like, like yeah, yeah. So with cultural genocide, um, it is perfectly plausible, I don't believe it, but it's perfectly plausible that the standard of living of every single one of the victims of the uh, genocidal project that China is currently embarking on right now with respect to the Uyghurs uh, ends up being sort of economically and psychologically yada 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 better off after the fact. Nonetheless, you have completely unpersoned and destroyed a culture um, by means of the machinery of the state. So it's still a cultural genocide. It's not really here nor there whether or not there's a utilitarian reason for it at the end of the day. 
Um, yeah, the reasoning doesn't matter. Yeah, now in, in this particular case, yep. again, the form is the same. It seems the only defense that you would have is that technically uh, the gender category is in some sense socially sustained. Um, therefore, it's sort of akin to a cultural genocide, but at the same time, um, the the consequence of taking away treatment that is effectively prescribed to offset a confirmed uh, tendency towards extreme mental unwellness uh, going on to like suicidality um, is to promote that and and all those other things as well. So I don't I don't yeah. I don't I don't I don't know I mean, what his, would, I don't know what his point like, is. That that's what I did. That's that's what confuses me is I don't I don't get what's I don't get what's being like contested here like just because like i don't know the reasoning but also the form of it is slightly different the like the, the end goal is the same like you are taking what is unique to this to this group of people you are finding a way uh you are finding you know a, a way to harm that group uh, by targeting by whatever means necessary i mean like if you like, I mean, not to just keep going back to Nazis, but that's the core of this conversation. Like, Nazis uh, targeted disabled people, uh, you know, very early on and uh, targeted them by not not just not only by, um, you know, like rounding up and, and, and killing specific people, but pr prior to that, by denying them aid by targeting the places by closing down the places where disabled people could get aid yep. by slowly choking them out and making them die in the shadows that's exactly what the intent of these laws do it, laws that are that are meant to make it uh impossible for for young trans people to participate in school activities without uh without either or, either completely or without uh, outing themselves publicly and and bringing pub uh sometimes literally national attention like i mean how many times have we had uh you know trans students be outed because of the policies of their school only to have it be picked up by tucker carlson the next day and have that family put on blast on a national level yeah. which no family can handle no family can handle that let alone like you know random people who are just trying to like whose kid is just trying to participate in sports at on a middle school or high school level like just because like the tactic by which you squeeze someone out of existence is is different depending on the group that like if you're if you're a a, a eugenicist who hates people who can't walk you're going to target like someone's ability to access wheelchairs and canes uh, but you might not do that if you were targeting like i don't know uh, uh people with depression or people with like uh, uh schizophrenia like the the form is different like the, the tactic that's used to squeeze them out of existence is different but that doesn't mean that the act itself that the crime itself is the, is a different crime the goal is the same to squeeze someone out of existence because of something that is deeply attached to their uh life to something that is intrinsic to them and yeah it seems to be that the move he's making sort of implicitly is that for something to qualify as a genocide apart from all these other conditions that he accepts even from the un definition which again like it's it's enough by the un definition as far as i my reading of it is concerned um it seems to be that if <clears throat> if a person is uh denying access to life-sustaining stuff is is not genocidal um unless there is some kind of like like the language of choking out is interesting because i agree with it by the same token um it's a little bit more different than that isn't it because it's not like it's not like the state goes out of its way to like identify trans people pick out the specific things that they require and then target those specifically and and um explicitly as, as like that's that's their intent of doing so but what actually seems to happen is um, there's sort of an indifference to the fact that it's been determined by science that these things are in fact necessary. And then to just simply allow these things to be, uh, sort of like the dials turned down. So like oxygen is removed. And so it's like, it's not, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not genocide. We're just both. not, yeah, yeah. I, I think, well, it's I, think I think it's both too, um, actually. I was thinking that as I was saying. Yeah. That. Uh, cause, and I think it varies a lot depending on, uh, right now, uh, the way, 
the way that I talk about the United States, people, when people ask me, because I get obviously asked this question a lot on my stream, like, is, like, should I flee the United States? Like, what's the, what, how are trans rights to be considered in the United States? And I always say it's a patchwork. Uh, some places are way better than others. Like, where I live now, I live in Washington. Um, it is, we are about the best in the United States. There are in the state constitution now, as a part of the, like, independent of the federal constitution, the state constitution, there is protections for trans people explicitly now, um, which is not the case for most United States, no, most states in the United States, and is not true for the federal level. Um, uh, but keep in mind that, you know, uh, Donald Trump, two big, the two biggest things like that, that got the most media attention under Donald Trump was, first of all, his explicit ban of trans people in the military, which was done um, not just because he had the power to do it, but also because, as it turns out, a lot of trans people do a, do military service because that's the only way they can get a job reliably is to put their life on the line. And then they transition when they leave the military because they're guaranteed health care. Mm. Um, so that was deliberate. And then the other thing that's even more deliberate was a lot of people forget this. But um, Donald Trump's uh, Donald Trump's uh, 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 HHS, the, the Health and Human Services. Um, department, uh, I, I might be getting the acronym slightly incorrect, published a memo that specifically, that was specifically designed to be distributed to women's shelters uh, that explained in great detail how to quote unquote spot uh, people who might be impersonating women um, and talked about like pronounced Adam's apples, fa facial hair. It was disgusting. And this is an example of a very explicit, like we know we know for a fact that trans people are more likely to experience uh, domestic violence, more likely to experience sexual violence, more likely to experience homelessness. This is they knew this. This is well known by the government. And their de their decision was to make it harder for trans women specifically, because that's what Trump, what most conservatives end up getting fixated on. But trans women specifically make it harder for trans women to access uh, uh, women's shelters and homeless shelters. So. Yeah, I, I would say it's both. That I was think, a bit of a long tangent, but... Yeah, I know, it's fine. Um, I think what I meant to say is, I think the sticking point for loner box is going to be displacement. And one of the problems, again, because we're talking about a dispersed identity that doesn't have, like, there's there's no organization or, or like, like genetic thing that you can attach it to. It's literally just an identity that is... is you're belonging to it is self-ascribed. Um, if, uh, if, if sort of, like, the the, the spatial logic... That's, that's sort of inherent to like how how states talk about stuff like this um it, it's not really tuned to be able to recognize that kind of thing and so the exact type the exact same type of action could be taking place um but you won't register it as a genocide because it's like well genocide is something that happens uh within a, within a particular space to a particular space a city occupied. or like oh all the truth but then but then at the same time while yeah. I agree with I I, I completely agree with what you're saying like by and large like that like this is one of the things that like it becomes a sticking point for a lot of people because they don't they don't see the shape of like oh, oh there's no vans going into a big city and taking people to another place except did we have we have we have has everyone forgotten texas that there was a mass exodus of family with trans kids that is still ongoing now because greg abbott is still in power in texas and greg abbott uh, had his uh, had his um, uh, Department of Health and Human Services targeting trans families because he pushed a law that would criminalize uh, any uh, doctor or parent that uh, had their was giving their kid gender affirming care, and that led to a a confirmed. There are many news stories about families fleeing Texas. So while that doesn't look the same shape because now everything is distributed via. Uh, electronic means and there's a lot less need to uh directly uh you know black bag and black vans and whatever and, and helicopters people uh the effect is the same which is there's a mass exodus of people having to flee the fact that they can now be convicted in one place or or are threatened of being convicted obviously that's been uh his actions have been held up in uh federal court and uh but but there have been numerous reports of his agencies going ahead and using the powers of the texas state while even while the law is held up in federal court which is a whole other thing but 
I just wanted to bring that up. And, yeah, no, no, that's very you know. much appreciated. Um, Demon Mama, I hate to do this to you. Um, I am, I am really fading fast. Like we've been going for four hours, and my stamina is like diminished oh, tremendously. Right. Would you be game to continue this uh, another day, like maybe even tomorrow? Yeah, sure. All I'm right. down with that. Okay, I, I'm going to be. No one's good for you. I'm going to be streaming the same time, so from four fifteen to uh, hopefully not till till eight twenty, as we are tonight. Um, All right. But uh, yeah, because yeah, I'm there's seeing there's the, forty five minutes left, and, and forty five minutes with commentary can easily eat up two hours. So. Um, yeah, no problem. And also, yeah. like, if you uh, if you uh, if you just want to like watch it uh, on your stream tomorrow, and then we have a conversation after, I'm down for that as well. So that that works perfectly. That works for well. you. Uh, thanks very much for coming on, Demon Mama. Um, yeah, no problem. You uh, you have a good night. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. And uh, chat. Um, we are we are now. The uh, the imp is crossing horns with the tentacle so go subscribe to demon mama she's got good stuff all right i'm going to call it here we're going to continue this tomorrow we have a lot more to go through with bagardus um we're going to go through one of the hasslinger papers i think um and uh then depending on what's going on with demon mama we will continue this debate review uh, again, if you appreciate what I do, uh, definitely like and share the video and subscribe. And consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon. Become, be, consider becoming a patron. Don't become Patreon. Patreon is horrible. Alright, take care, everyone.